Take a moment right here Feeling like a sound gear Driving towards the sun With a rose and a gun Feel the wind in my hair Going nowhere I swear Like an outlaw on the run Dangerous but it's so fun Running, running Told my boss that I'm done Had no luck with my mom Say what will you do with your life You know it's hard to survive A cigar in my mouth Maybe guilty but proud Now I'm an outlaw on the run Dangerous but it's so fun Running, running
Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's broadcast of the Risen Championship Series Tier 2 Tournament. We have got a great matchup tonight between two undefeated teams in a new esports and Mirage. My name is Gordo, and I am joined tonight by Doctor. Doctor, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. I've been watching some Peter McKinnon videos, some anime rap videos. I'm hype. I'm excited. And like you said, it is going to be these two undefeated teams. They're just going to be going at it. There's so much fun things in the meta right now. And if you haven't been watching League of Legends, first of all, you're missing out. Second of all, thank you for coming back into the fold of Risen Esports. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got some real exciting teams tonight, both sitting at two and zero right now. We've got Mirage, who have been performing really great so far in amateur and who have quite the history of performing well as well. But nothing compared to the history of a new esports our reigning amateur champions. Yeah, and as we head into draft phase, which does look like the teams have kind of started a little bit without us, but that's fine. We'll forgive them. Uh, you know, we're starting to see some of these targeted bands coming out already. The Syndra, the Nidalee, Talia even making it onto the board. We've been seeing a lot of her lately, thanks to the most recent buff. So as we head into the pick phase, this is when things really start to get spicy because there are a lot of great power picks still available for first pick blue side. Yeah, Mirage going to be targeting some of those bands over towards Anda on the side of Adu. And can you really blame them with a former world championship competitor on the side of a new esports coming all the way here to Risen tonight to play for a new esports? Yeah, sometimes you just need that little pick me up, a little bit of the ringer, and it is going to be Lilia Ban Pantheon pick. I do love the Pantheon. It's been picked up a lot recently. You know, the recent changes made him incredibly strong in the damage department. You love to see it. Yeah, no, Pantheon is busted right now. That man can do so much damage with that tap Q on such a short cooldown, can bust out that targeted CC so easily, and can be flexed everywhere. You can see support Pantheon. We've seen jungle Pantheon over in the LPL. We've seen some mid lane Pantheon in this tournament already. I'm sure you could take it top lane, maybe even AD carry if you're feeling like it. Uh, when there's things that, like Jin that do what he does kind of except from range uh, maybe maybe shy away from the 80 carry spot it is an interesting decision though i'll give you that one um and when you have a champion that's that versatile then yeah if you're coming into these best of series sometimes you can play that trap card once or twice uh and really make the other team kind of guesstimate and try and figure out exactly what's happening uh with the thresh pick though i think they may shy away from that and they may look to go a little bit more traditional in that bottom side for a new yeah, gonna be the Aphelios Thresh coming through, but now Anu hovering another power pick here with the Akal. You got to assume that that's going to be going towards Five Fire in the mid lane. A signature champion for him. He was playing a lot of it last season. He's already been playing it this season, and he is going to be a huge threat on that pick. And now, once again, hovering even more early game aggression on the side of Anu as they are hovering over this Lucian, potentially. But they're switching over to the Misfortune, and they're gonna lock it right on in. Yeah, I do like the idea of sticking with that early game damage. Uh, Misfortune has been able to scale quite nicely thanks to these no, more recent uh, item changes. So it's an overall strong pick, not quite that same do or die by 15 minutes champion that we've seen in the past. So it's a great pickup. I'm curious if it is going to be combined with that Pantheon, which as we've already said, is an incredibly strong lane there in the bottom. It is very volatile in that it can burst people really quickly and if you can catch somebody like the aphelios off guard then you can just instantly delete them the lulu is doing a really good job and it looks like we're going to be getting a protect the aphelios comp so far yeah, that is certainly what it looks like. And maybe showing their hand a little early on the side of Mirage is that Lulu not going to be on support with Thresh already locked in. That's likely going to be going over to DNA in the mid lane. Yeah, we've been seeing... Uh, Lulu crop up a little bit in the solo lanes. She, again, recently changed. That kind of instigated a lot of these kind of, not decisions, but like mind games where you can start doing things like this. Uh, I kind of would have liked it being picked more of a flex to try and bait out potentially a safer mid laner or a safer support pick from a new. But Mirage, they want to just really ham fist in this protect comp. Aphelios, they've already signed on as their bread and butter. The Darius being banned away means that we might have to fall back to one of those other carry top laners. That's even the decision. You know, they could still go for the Camille or the Fiora, which are definitely in their wheelhouse. 
Yeah, that's right. And everybody, your eyes do not deceive you. That is a Darius ban. Dragoon on the side of Mirage is an excellent Darius player, incredibly experienced on that champion. And he has proven in this tournament already that he is willing to bust it out in organized play. And he can do great on that. He can get advantages all on his own in the 1v1 in that top lane. He can blow your flash. He can solo kill you. And he can transition that lead with the rest of Mirage around the map. So you got to watch out for Dragoon in this matchup, although he has a tough drop ahead of him going up against the former LCS player himself, Viper. Yeah, and they're still keeping up with the standard bands here. Uh, Graves is going to be that, you know, very solid, very practiced jungler. Um, you know, we have seen a little bit of an interesting uh, game plan coming out from the new jungler themselves where they've been going for that um, shield bow Graves. Which, again, we were talking about this earlier. It's an interesting pick to be sure with, you know, Shieldbow being the weakest of the three that Mythics there. Um, so, banded away. They don't want Mirage to have that, but Mirage seemed fine with that. Yeah, and Captain Flowers is beside himself that he's cast an LCS right now because that is going to be a Skarner lock-in for the side of Mirage. They are just going to be going with one of those tankier junglers rather than a lot of the aggression that we've seen. And with all of those junglers that have already hit the ban list, Skarner going to be quite the interesting option coming out from their side. And now this is the point where Anu have to decide, is this going to be support Pantheon or jungle Pantheon? And with the Alistair lock-in, it feels like it's going to be jungle. They do still have this last pick. Is that the NA Jace? Oh, Wait. it might be. Oh, All right. I, I like this. I do like the Orn. Orn still incredibly strong. Not like S tier zero, like absolute must pick top laner that we've seen previously, but he is still like, super strong. Able to bring in those mythics and really help the team out. Uh, oh, do it, them. Dragoon. Do it. No, just do it. Lock do it, it in. It. LS would be proud. I would love to see it because that's something, that, that is a pick that actually, in my opinion, beats the Orn. A lot of times we see teams pick like stale matchups into the Orn, like we've seen Riven picked into the Orn, we've seen other carries like Fiora and things like that picked into the Orn, and they all get solo killed by the better player on the Orn. This time though, the Alawi has a lot more going for them, can be much more explosive into the Orn, doesn't have to get into these long dragged out fights to really have that potential of losing and it completely opens up the team fight. So now you don't have to worry so much about the Aphelios in a certain situation because Alawi is going to jump into your backline and explode tentacles everywhere. That is right. And Dragoon showing that he is not intimidated by the pedigree of his opposition. He is going to bust out this aggressive lane focused Alawi. He's going to bully this Orn and he is just going to try to slam the door shut on Anu before they can even get started. Something that Anu really wants to keep that door open for. They got that Pantheon locked in. He's going to be so powerful in the early game. He's going to be looking for the level six ultimates, but he might also be looking for the level two or level three cheese with that early on selection based CC. He can just create so many opportunities for engages and for early kills yeah and i think we're gonna see a lot of bot lane action from that pantheon you know you have that alistar you have the misfortune this on command engage button you can really get something going and with the thresh being the disengage there you can kind of overwhelm him in certain situations um, and so you definitely want to be able to combine those two when when you look at the rest of the lanes they're not quite as juicy as a gank target. Yes, the Akali Lulu can make some things happen, but I think a lot of that's going to be post six with the Akali. I don't think there's a lot of opportunity early on between the new Glitter Lance and the shielding that she can bring in. The Whimsy also incredibly potent tool to get out of ganks. As soon as she sees the Pantheon walk in, just turn him into a little cute squirrel and walk away. And so focus on the bot lane, get the misfortune as far ahead as possible, shut down the Aphilios, which can also carry quite well and really set your team up for the best possible situation. If you have to go mid because the Lulu's hard pushing, do so, but don't make it your primary target. Yeah, and Mirage coming out with what is all in all a kind of low mobility composition. You know, very few dashes available on the side of this team. Maybe a couple of movement speed boosts coming in from the sides of Skarner and Lulu. But they got to be real careful about getting trapped in the bounce house from the side of Anu as this Orn ultimate plus this Alistair Pulverize combo going to be coming through and going to be holding them on top of bullet time, going to be holding them down for the assassins of Pantheon and Akali to come through their team and to try to pick off some of those squishier targets. It's going to require a lot of discipline from the side of Mirage to stay farther back and to try to make a new fight into them on their terms. Yeah, the game plan for Mirage right now is just to survive. 
right? Like, they're hoping that they can eat all of that hard CC, all of that burst damage, and just persevere and carry on through the team fight. And then once all the cooldowns are blown, all of the damage has already come through, you then counter engage and really turn it on them. They do have some pick potential just simply because of the Skarner uh, with the Whimsy to speed him up, but it, it's not guaranteed, right? Like, it's not the same thing as a Pantheon or, you know, the Ornhorn. You do need to work a little bit with it, and if you get shut down, if you get if you get headbutted back even, that just completely shuts down your end gauge. So Mirage looking to just be the counter engage here or be first to an objective. If they can get the vision control and set up in a death bush, a pixel bush, whatever it is that they can find, then all of a sudden it's a lot more potent. If you can get a surprise death sentence, a surprise impale onto a squishy target before they're even aware of you, then you can blow them up quite easily with the Alawi and the Aphelios. Yeah, they could also get some sneaky picks with that Skarner Thresh combo, being able to stab somebody with the Impale, drag them a little distance, grab the Lantern, and take them even farther away from their team. So something that Anu's going to have to watch out for, but as long as they can avoid getting picked off like that, if they can get those straight up 5v5 team fights, if Mirage can't withstand all of that, and just ends up losing a member, losing two members, getting melted down during that CC and during that large wombo combo, that's going to be a news key to winning the fights. Yeah, and winning the fight means they get the objectives, whether it's Dragon, Herald, even Towers at that point, you start opening up the map and you just snowball so hard at that point you have these hard carries like the misfortune like the pantheon once you start building up these serrated dirks into even more powerful items the job of mirage continues to get harder because you still need to build damage but you're being out damaged so you think that you need to build defensively but those are expensive now so you're just you're in an in-between zone where you're like all right i need to catch up but they keep killing me and i'm playing in grayscale and it's just everything is not going my way and it can be really frustrating to be in that situation Situation, even if you know that potentially you outscale if you know that eventually you'll get to a point where you can survive the burst and so it's going to be very mentally taxing here in game one if a new get ahead and i've seen that in the past bleed into game two for a lot of teams and it goes from being a close game one to a bit of a stomping game two so i'm hoping mirage can stay good here and they can stay all in the zone focused on exactly what they need to do and make sure that they're not getting out of hand early on yeah, and it is going to be all about Mirage being able to hit those specific thresholds to survive the engage. Like you said, Alawi is likely going to be building up that Gore Drinker. Lulu is going to have access to the Rapid Growth and is going to have access to the W Shield. And so we can see that they're going to need to get those shields to a point, get that sustain to a point where they can survive through all of that engage, where they can survive the Pantheon burst and the Akali burst. And from that point on, Anu is not going to have access to anything at all to be able to win these fights. That's Mirage's key to the game, but we're going to have to see if they'll be able to execute on it. But with that said, we're going to need to take a quick break here as we get loaded up into the game and make sure we're all synchronized across all the casts. But do not go anywhere. We're going to bring you every bit of game one action in just a few minutes stay tuned
Welcome back, everybody, to tonight's stream of the Risen Championship Series Tier 2 Tournament. We have got Game 1 of a new eSports versus Mirage starting up right here, right now. Both teams are belting it down the mid lane, going for a standard spread to start it all off. My name is Gordo, and I am joined once again by Doctor to see if there's going to be some Level 1 action going on. Yes, I don't think it's going to be too exciting. I think it's just going to be a quick late ward from both sides. Uh, you can see here Hunter already going back for the Sweeper Trinket. Gets a little bit delayed, though, so might actually have to just give up on that idea. Yeah, no, going to be Trinketless here at level 1 if he gets interrupted again. And does coming right back, but doesn't actually manage to interrupt it. So Hunter going to be a step ahead of the competition. He's got that Sweeper in his inventory, and he is walking on back to his jungle. Yeah, it, it does mean that there's no Deep Ward coming in from a new esports, though. So they, they have an idea of where Hunter will be starting just because that's where they saw them last, but they don't truly know. But pings are going on to the Raptor camp again. Five fire, gonna be able to find DNA. Yeah, gonna get that ward down early and he is going to go right into that wave, start shoving it out for the early game against this Lulu. We can see that they are going to be starting on opposite sides of the map. So perhaps not going to be too much action early on for, between the junglers. Dragoon finishing up his leash over up in the red buff. Going to be making it to lane a little bit later as uh, Viper is going to have priority immediately. Yeah, it will potentially give level 2 earlier to the Orn. Uh, but when you're the carry in this matchup, you're not that concerned. Had it been a fighter versus fighter matchup, it, it can be that much more vital to get the level 2 because if they're the level ahead, they have that extra ability, which means they can just bully you out. Uh, because Orn's a tank, though, you're not that concerned about it. Level 2 hit here in the mid lane from both sides. Yeah, no, 5 Fire managing to land the Shuriken flip and is going to take it all the way in to trade back onto DNA. Both parties sitting at about half HP, but 5 Fire does have fleet work and he feels good being able to sustain up as this lane goes on. Yeah, you'll notice the biscuits for DNA, though, so quite healthy. Level 2 in the bottom lane over to Mirage side as well. Again, they were there first. They didn't have to leash for their jungler, so they get that little bit of a bonus. We'll have to see what they can do with it for a second. But it does look like Anda's going to be coming on down bot lane here, but there's also going to be a gank in the top lane. No, actually, that is just uh, Viper's own clone there. But Viper might actually be going for this solo kill. But just like that, here comes Anda for the early gank. It's going to be Meech getting knocked back into the members of a new esports, and they're going to take him down easily. And now it is going to be Roy following up. He's going to get taken down as well. Anda gets a double kill at less than three minutes into the game. All right, GG go next, right? Like Pantheon gets a double kill. This, if this were a scrim, we'd be we'd be resetting right now. But that is that is so good for a new. You love to see it. That's exactly what's going to propel you into a much better spot this game. And you saw even Viper in the top side getting the better of Dragoon. And so far, everything is coming up anew. They just need to hold on. Yeah, I thought there must be a gank or something going on because I saw Viper's own soul sitting in front of him. And I was like, oh, yeah, definitely got to be Anda somehow in the top lane when I missed it. Because how how on earth would Orin be winning this early trade against Valawi? But Viper's found a way to make it happen. And there's just favorable trades going across the map in favor of a new esports. Yeah, everybody always forgets the Orn damage in the early game. It, it's so deceptive. And you can really get caught off guard to it. Uh, the biggest thing is when you can get multiple CCs off in one little chain. And look at this. It, it's yeah, so no. good. And getting the clap. trade coming out. But now and on Hunter have run into each other. But meanwhile, there's going to be a snare coming down onto value. They're trying to get the 2v2 kill here. And it looks like they might be able to do so. Meech is going to be landing those slows down from the Gravitum gun. And he's going to easily pick up value here. Value isn't even going to be able to go for the execute. He's going to get picked up by Meech here. And a little bit of a trade back coming for from Mirage. They aren't out of this game quite yet. But just like that, Five Fire is going aggressively in the mid lane. He's going hard onto DNA, trying to pick up the kill here. He's going to find himself forced away but he flashes in, he gets the last set of kunai knives, and he is going to pick up that kill. I cannot think of a better start for a new. Yes, you're eating carry died, but they already have two assists. They have 28 CS. They're able to pick up double longswords on their first back. Your mid laner coming out ahead doesn't even burn the teleport just yet. We'll have to see if they do to use that. But DNA was so close, pixels worth of closeness to picking up the kill onto five fire, which would have done wonders 
for this protected carry comp they've set up for themselves. Instead, it's more assassin damage. You're able to already have that Merc Treads completed, which gives you more move speed. The bonus to the magic resistance, a little bit of tenacity to potentially get out of that uh, oh, no, Dragoon. a little bit quicker. Yeah, Dragoon is gonna about to find himself be three man here, as we can see that here comes Anda coming around from the side. Five fires here as well, but he might not even be necessary as they're just gonna move on forward. They already know that he TP'd and he's gonna get taken down a huge blow to the side of Dragoon. Another kill over to Anda, that melee assassin it's right after the teleport too like as a top laner you that's what you have nightmares about when you go to bed at night after playing solo queue for 13 hours that is what wakes you up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat and now this is a huge wave you're losing out on too it's got a cannon there's going to be another wave shortly after let's see if that has a second cannon this is not but still so much gold just gone to the ether yeah, I know, and just like that, Dragoon is living out those nightmares. He's down a level to Viper, he's down his teleport, he's down 10 CS. He's gonna try to go and pick up a little bit of that back right now, and his team's got the dragon, but definitely feels bad for him up in that lane when he's supposed to be dominating this matchup. You know, the Ornn is gonna come through with the ornaments later on in the game. He's gonna be presenting so much gold value to his team just by virtue of existing. Uh, it feels real bad to be falling behind in the early game matchup. Do oh, and a big right engage now. coming in from the side of Roy here. They're going to be going on to value yet again, and it looks like they're going to pick up another kill for Meech here, but maybe not quite enough space. Meech just going to flash forward, pick it up with the Chakrams, and now he's 2-1 and one on this Aphelios, but there's a gank coming in from the side of Big and from the side of Anda. Big is going to be landing that CC, but a good hook comes through from the side of Roy to try to keep him away, but Meech going to be able to trade it back onto Big, actually. 3-1 and one now on this Aphelios. Excellently played by Meech here. A lot of hype coming through for this 80 carry on the side of mirage and he's showing why yeah great play there they saw the alistar on the ward by the raptor camp which they knew they could pull the trigger onto value at that point as soon as they step up so they get the first kill everything's looking good it looks quite bad once the gank comes in but the alistar was so far ahead of Anda that once the engage happens, you have the red-white combo there for the Aphelios. It's the absolute best at just simply melting people. And that's exactly what you saw. Alistar, not super tanky yet, only has the Doran shield, gets melted. They try to keep the damage going, but there's just too much healing at that point, too much sustain coming in from Meech. And they're gonna be 3-1 now. And is the solo light in the dark here for Mirage right here. And if they can keep this up, it's gonna hit a point where it doesn't matter that the Lulu's behind, that the top laners behind because you just all keep Aphelios alive and you can win these team fights you can melt through these frontliners and hope that you can just sustain long enough yeah, no, and that's definitely going to be a sore point for the side of Anu. While they're slamming across the map, they're actually showing some weakness here in the bot lane as Meech just consistently being able to find out plays along with Roy to get himself ahead. Even with the jungler coming down, they're able to trade back a kill and escape with their lives. And uh, That's going to be something that you got to clean up on the side of Anu if you're going to want to snowball this game as you previously were. Yeah, you can see Dragoon still doing what they can in the top side hated here uh viper otherwise known just doesn't really care about the the ghost tentacles though is is completely fine with just weathering the storm making sure that they're not you know losing out on the vision war and look at this they're still healthier than dragoon yeah, contrary to his IGN, Viper doesn't hate it up here at all. He's feeling pretty strong. He's feeling like he's got a favorable uh, side of the matchup at this point. Usually you'd expect him to be behind, but he's built up a decent lead for himself. He's got the Bammy Cinder. He's got the Bramble Vest, and he's just farming it out here. Is happy as a clam. Yeah, when you get jungle assistance, you know it's going to be a good game. As soon as you get that first gank, as we see here in the mid lane... Yeah, going to be going in for five fire here. They get the stun down and now have the impale to follow up. Impale's going to come through. He's going to be suppressed. He's going to try to ult away with the perfect execution. Doesn't quite have the final execute. Now he does, but Hunter's going to flash over him. Oh, an excellent use of the smoke screen there. Five fire jukes him out, flashes over the wraith wall and manages to escape with it. Meets trying to follow up with his ultimate, but not going to be able to catch him either. Five fire stays alive, but now Dragoon finding himself engaged on in the top lane. Viper going to be landing the ultimate and going to be getting the solo kill in the Orn versus Alawi matchup. Viper is slamming this lane. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I was talking some pretty good stuff about Vatalawi, and uh, none of what I said is, is happening, unfortunately. 
Um, but we saw the great play in the mid lane there from Five Fire. They're a little bit under siege again. But, I mean, the fact that they escaped that gank with their life is huge. There's so much value in surviving. Yes, you blew all your summoners, but you survived. And at the end of the day, that's what's important. You did see a bit of a wonky herald there, unfortunately, but that was because Ando was trying to use the... Uh, the, the sweeper there to make sure that there was no ward so that they couldn't get the ranged auto attack over the wall but yeah the herald so yeah, a mistake Sad. that we've all made before and uh, i wouldn't worry about it too much but we got to give it up to five fire they're demonstrating so much mastery on this akali here being able to use that smoke screen at just the right location to look like he's running back towards his tower where hunter was chasing him but actually juking back inside so that he can get to the wraith wall flash over it and escape Extremely close. The Mark Tread's really coming in clutch there, just across the board. And it, it's so tough for DNA right now. You're in a bit of a tough spot because you're here to support your team. You're here to farm waves and try and keep the Akali contained so that they're not going around the map, not, you know, ganking your other lanes and making things worse. But instead, you're getting priority from your jungler right now. And it's a lot of time wasted. It's time that you could have sent to the top side to maybe keep Dragoon a little bit more afloat as they're now down two waves worth of CS. Yeah, this isn't the on-hit AP Lulu of old, but now it's going to be big, going in for a big engage here, but Hunter just going to get sucked away by the side of that Dark Passage, and now going to be landing a big impale onto the side of Big. He's going to get taken down as well, and now Hunter leading the charge into Anda and into Value. They're going to be taking a lot of damage here. This Aphelios is now so powerful, and another kill going to be picked up. Anda has already been taken down, and he's where all the gold was. Five Fire sitting in the back, but now he finds himself in a 1v4. He goes for the Execute, but he doesn't even land that, and he's going to get picked up by the side of Meech. An excellent fight from the side of Mirage. Pulls themselves back into the game and take it four for zero you absolutely love it when a plan comes together that is exactly what that composition is designed to do it does not matter how far behind each individual is as long as they can hold hands together make sure Meech is alive and keep them alive everything will come out correctly in the end and you saw it there they survive the initial burst even after being low from the dragon itself they still come out ahead in the team fight Meech with some amazing positioning to make sure that they can keep the damage going throughout the entire fight you saw dna come in off the backside there within a with just a perfect wild growth because and had the lock down. They had the crowd control about to connect on to Meech, and instead the wild growth comes in, interrupts the stun, and Meech is just able to continue free firing into that front facing enemy team. Yeah, no, these assassins just weren't able to get on to Meech. You said it yourself, and if they can't get on to Meech, then he is just one of the strongest champions in this game to be sitting there free firing in a small corridor like that. And that's exactly how Mirage as a team like to play and have played all this tournament, and especially how they like to play with this comp they've drafted here. They want the side of Anu to be coming into them in these tight corridors, and they want to abuse that fact with their Thresh, with their Aphelios, with their Skarner, and soon to be with their Alawi. Dragoon wasn't in that last fight but if dragoon is there in a really small area landing big allowy ultimates that is going to turn the fight even harder in mirage's favor oh but now going to be an engage coming into the top lane anda has ulted in with the man drop and is going to take down dragoon dragoon just not having the time of his life here as he's going to get picked up once again but it's small consolation compared to the big team fight wins that mirage has picked up yeah it is a little unfortunate to see your top laner still just getting bullied but they have the global, they have the winning lane, and you recognizing that for a new, they're taking advantage of it. They're getting as much gold as they can out of it, and they're going to hopefully try and carry off at the back of that, but... Hunter that's going a little bit too aggressive here. Seems to think he can 1v1 Viper for some reason, uh, but Ando's just going to come back around just to remind everybody, hey, I was just here a second ago. I haven't teleported elsewhere. Uh, he comes right back up, and he takes down Hunter for another kill. Yeah, that's a... It's a little bit unfortunate. Um, you, you don't want to put yourself into that position. You've already kind of lost the top half of the map there. So you, I understand wanting to pick up the, the minions of the tower. That's fine. Just take the minions, leave. There, there's no reason to engage upon the Orn at that point. Even if you're expecting the teleport from Dragoon, I, you don't win the 2v2. Oh, but a big engage in the bot lane. Meech going to get a nice flash here, but he's going to get perfectly executed on by Five Fire. They're just dumping everything into him, and they're going to shut him down. And it looks like it's going to just be an afterthought to pick up Roy as well. A big engage in the bot lane from the side of a new esports. They recognize the threat of Aphelios, and they move as a team to shut him down. 
good stuff. They, they took the numbers. They overwhelmed what little support and healing there was from Roy. Oh, and now DNA is finding himself dove here. He's going to get hit with a pulverized combo, and he is going to get taken down by that bullet time. And now Hunter finds himself in a 1v3 under turret. Viper just tanking up this turret like it ain't no thing. But at a certain point, it is going to become a thing, and he's going to have to just back on out of there. Yeah, another really solid play there. They have the tank stats. They have the numbers. Even with Hunter coming in there, they're really not that concerned. He could have impaled somebody and tried to keep him locked under the tower, but just the way it worked out, they, they didn't really have the tower aggro for that. Uh, they did it perfectly. All the damage was being focused onto Big T there. You know, they were able, as the tank, to do their job. And it's a it's a good prize to pick up there it's more gold in the pocket of these carries and it's looking like a new know what they need to do right like they've they focused on to the aphelios they recognize their mistakes of the dragon fight and they're not looking to repeat them yeah and i do i do have to give props to hunter there for the discipline in not using the skarner ultimate to try go for a fancy play here he recognizes that that is a really long cooldown and he needs that level one skarner ultimate for upcoming team fights with the rest of his team picking up a random solo kill on skarner even if he does pick it up is not going to net them what they need they need to be ready for this dragon fight they need to have impale for it so they can get onto soul point like they want to they are Getting pinched a little bit though. Viper's in a great spot. Oh, no. A big ultimate call. The Forge God coming Yo. through. But not gonna be able to hit it through. He's gonna get flayed away by the side of Roy. Excellently played by him here. And now here comes the team fight. Mirage going to have the positioning that they want. They have their frontliners in the front. They have their backliners in the back. And now it looks like Big not going to be able to get the engage he wants. He tries to escape with the headbutt, but he's not gonna be able to do so. Meat shuts him down. And now Viper finds himself alone in a 1v4. He's gonna get picked up easily as well. Yo. And a huge hook on the five fire. Excellent prediction from the side of Roy. A triple kill kill over to Meech, and Mirage once again plays the fight exactly how they want to, in the exact same location, and they're going to take themselves to Soul Point. Roy is winning this game for their team. Just coming in, interrupting the Ornhorn, staying alive after that, and then having a perfect death sentence on the Akali, who's trying to dive into that backline and interrupting it. Everything there coming up for Raj. They keep Meech alive. There's no shot for the side of a new to get anywhere near them even after that ornhorn gets interrupted and the whole team fight just falls apart even hunter who's in a 1v3 1v4 on the top half of the dragon pit there walks away alive just able to chunk through their own health bar using it as a resource to distract the other carries of a new and escape on the backside with a little help from dna and once that initial engage power from a new wears off it's me just time to shine just standing as a turret letting loose coming out ahead they get the team fight they get the dragon and like you said they're on soul point yeah, and if you're Five Fire right now, you're sitting back in your chair just like, wow, that really just happened. Five Fire is a huge pedigree in this amateur scene. He has been one of the best mechanical players here for a long time, but now he's finding himself engaged on again. He's going to try to flash away, but he's going to end up played. He's going to perfect execution away, and he's going to go for the escape here and manage to keep himself alive. But he's finding himself bullied and caught out by the side of Roy a bit more than he would expect to. Dragoon going to get shut down by Anda here in the 2v1 gank. Excellent played by him but definitely not going to be enough to turn around this whole game they're gonna have to pull together for this next dragon fight definitely a bit of a question mark to use the flash there um you, you knew you were dead it was a 2v1 you already took a ton of damage i think what we're seeing though is a bit of a good thing for dragoon in the straight up 1v1 they were pretty close on the hp yes viper took a couple tower shots but overall it was pretty close. I think once we start getting a, a couple more items onto Dragoon, it, it might potential have for the 1v1 there. But for right now, they only have the Divine Sunder, whereas uh, Viper has the Sunfire Cape, has the Thornmail, has the Plated Steel Caps, plus another two Cloth Armors to back all of that up. It's tough. Yeah, and uh, Viper, though, hitting his own little power spike here as he's hit level 13 and picked up that Forge Fire Crest for himself. A couple more levels, and he's going to be able to give even more upgrades to his teammates. A lot of gold value in there, so keep in mind, a new esports gold lead is bigger than it may seem. Yeah, it, it does add... I, I don't know the exact math on it. It used to be 1,000 gold per upgrade. I don't know if it's changed. That one is my fault, chat. I am apologizing. Uh, but... 
it, it's we still you, doctor. <laughs> it is still a uh, sorry production in my ear talking. It it is still one thousand gold. You've heard it here first, folks. Uh, you may have heard it elsewhere, but you've heard it here first. And I want to take a look at these 80 carry items. You know, we do have a bit of an advantage there onto the side of Meech. Obviously, they got nine kills, right? Like, they're playing lights out. They do have the Kraken Slayer, followed up by the Runans with a BF Sword, whereas we're seeing value opt into that Gale Force for that little bit of extra mobility to potentially stay alive just a little bit longer and backing that up with a Serrated Dirk so far. Yeah, and now we're just going to see a little bit of a return to normalcy here. Neither team could risk the Baron at this point, and we're just waiting on that next Dragon Spawn. Mirage feels very confident about where they are right now, as they've been able to pick up the first three Dragons of the game against the heavy Snowball comp of the side of a new esports. And if they're able to pick up a fourth and get a soul at 25 minutes, ooh boy, that might just be the end right there. It's one of the best souls for them, too. It's the Ocean Soul. It gives you so much more sustain in these teamfight situations. If you get caught by a red-white Aphelios that has Ocean Soul, they don't die. Like, they're impossible to kill. They just laugh at you as you punch them. Like, imagine Captain Rogers facing off against, like, armorless Iron Man. Like, it's just, it's a joke. You don't win that fight. Yeah, no, just going to mean absolutely nothing there. He's just going to be shrugging off those knives, shrugging off those spears, because, you know, he's the one in the Iron Man armor at that point. You just can't even touch him. But they're going to need to pick up the soul in order to get to that point. Spawning in a little bit over 30 seconds here. So we are going to see both teams starting to gather around there, starting to fight for vision control. You can see Big starting to scan out in his own jungle, and Hunter standing in the dragon pit himself to make sure they can't get in. Oh, that's perfect. They pop the Herald mid using that as the distraction. The dragon is in 20 seconds, so they're not overly too concerned about the Herald. Probably could have held it for a couple more seconds, but it, it did need a little bit of an attention. And as we near this team fight, it's up to Five Fire to get into that Hulkbuster armor and break through to the back line here. They have to kill Meech. They're the only one strong enough to do it, even at one, two, two. And if they, if they can't, if they cannot get into that back line to get Meech, you might as well just count this game out at this point because they are so far ahead definitely going to be the focus on here so everybody knows where they need to keep their eyes oh, but no. Piper going to find himself hooked here once again Roy just putting this team on his back land and hooks where it's necessary it looks like it's going to be the Pantheon ultimate channel through it's going to land across a couple of people but not going to be able to be followed up on now Hunter going oh, to flash forward and going to get the impale onto value he's doomed he's shut down by the side of NA and DNA rather and that is going to be it they don't have access to misfortune they have no bullet time for the wombo combo they only only have five fires damage and their only hope at this point is a big steal from Anda. Yeah, who doesn't have the ultimate, only has the flash and the blast cone, and Dragoon's already here playing spoiler! Another hook! He's already getting CC'd down, he's already getting damaged onto, and here comes the fight. Five fires in the back line, but he's already been shut down from the side of the jungle. The pick up on the Dragon Soul is made by Hunter. Five fire is shut down by DNA, and just like that, Mirage have gotten their objective. They have the Ocean Soul. They win the fight. And now they're going to move on to Baron. Yeah, as much as you have to fight for that dragon, I cannot fault them for doing so. It's the Ocean Soul into this sustained composition. It's must take. Like, you have to take that fight even without your to carry. The problem is they now get the Baron on top of it. So this is ballooning into an insane lead for Mirage right now. And it's just, it's unfortunate for Anu because... They were in a no-win situation. Either you give up the Ocean Soul to potentially save yourself from losing the Baron, or you steal the Ocean Soul, or attempt to steal the Ocean Soul, and if you lose it, then you lose the Baron too, which as we all know is how it happened. But it, there was no winning there for you. Even if you get the steal, they just kill you and take the Baron. Like, it's so bad situation to find yourself in. Mirage in the best position so far we've seen them all series. It is game one, but I feel confident in saying this is their best spot all series so far. Yeah, and it's all because of Hunter, their new jungler, who they hadn't even started scrimming with until last weekend, coming through, finding the big pick onto value, getting that engage, getting that impale onto him, and killing him before the dragon even spawned. That's what enabled Mirage to be in such a favorable position in the first place. That's what forced Anu into that no-win situation, and guess what? They didn't win. Yeah, turns out when you lose, you, you lose, but... Yeah, I mean, we're seeing the strength of this composition so far. 
I mean, look at these shields coming out from DNA. They're already so big. And when you have that red weapon, it's just so difficult. And hey, Viper just continuing to try and be that frontline tank it has quite possibly the most army you can have at this stage of the game and is still being melted by this AD composition of Mirage. And it's only getting worse as DNA has picked up the Ardent Sensor, so he's going to be buffing up those auto attacks from Meech, giving him even more attack speed and enabling him to dominate even harder. Yeah, they're going to break that first inhibitor down as well thanks to the baron buff they're setting up to break a second one there is a bit of a split here as you do see five fire up in that top lane just trying to get something back for the team but that hook could have ended the game that hook could have ended the game the box has been used though which could be problematic yeah you know roy, roy is roy's on the same wavelength that i am he thinks he can't miss him anymore but he's going to be hitting that next one and that's going to be met with a call of the forge god they are trying to keep alive in this game and that is going to be a good time, but it's going to be met with another hook he never misses except for that one time he did and that's going to be value getting taken down that's going to be big being taken down as well and you've got to believe doctor that that's going to be the game as there's only three members of a new esports left and mirage is knocking on those doors Roy's my boy. He's coming up clutch in every single situation you can ask of him. Oh, that hook is going to connect. Five fire being forced to flash away, and this game is over. The bot lane of Mirage absolutely carrying this game. A huge lead for Meech. He's going to find himself being taken down by Anda there. But if there's ever a moment where you're allowed to die as AD carry, it's while your team takes down the Nexus. And Roy never missing these hooks, constantly finding engages, constantly finding picks, and leading Mirage to be one up in this series. And I, we, I wasn't exactly expecting that outcome from the beginning of draft to, you know, the pre draft when we were talking about the teams and how they stack up to each other. And the draft just wasn't what I was expecting to come out ahead. I, I thought there was too much power in those other champions that I knew had drafted, but the game just really fell apart for them really quickly. And it, it came apparent that the healing and shielding from Mirage built up so much faster than Anu expected them to be able to. And they got the early lead onto Meech. They kept that lead going. He only died twice in regulation. I'm counting that third death as overtime, but the two deaths just simply weren't enough. And then, my God, Roy, with just absolutely perfect control of that game, clutching out on every death sentence, the flays just completely ripped the news game plan apart. And what an upset in game one from the side of Mirage. The pedigree of the players on a new esports would lead anybody glancing at this on the wiki before the game started to be 100% convinced that a new esports was going to slam this series. They've got Viper, Big, and Anda, all former LCS players. They've got Five Fire, the king of NA amateur himself, and Value's no slouch either, playing for Maryville University last year, coming in to this new and esports roster. This is an amateur super team, and they were just taken down by the team of Mirage. But I mean, that's the best part about amateur North American League of Legends. You can come in with the best thing money can buy. And sometimes the other team is just better on that day. You're able to get these types of upsets. And as we head into game two, I am incredibly interested to be able to hear the comms of the new esports as they head into that draft phase because they had that early game advantage they had things going their way they started the game with a double kill onto anda like i even i said it in game i was like gg go next and mirage just simply didn't let up they kept their heads down they grinded it out and we were rewarded spectacularly for it that is the payoff to playing to your team comp, Doctor. Just Mirage playing to the style that they feel comfortable on, playing to the style that they drafted for. They wanted the side of Anu to come into them, and every time they were able to make them do that, they were able to take advantage of the situation, and they were able to put Meech in the perfect position to dominate this game. Most gold by far, most damage by far, and now going to be looked at as a serious threat coming into this game too. Now we are going to jump on into the next lobby. We're going to get everything set up for game two. We're going to take a quick break while we do that, but don't go anywhere because we've got another game of this banger series coming right up.
Take a moment right here Feeling like it's out gear Driving towards the sun With a rose and a gun Feel the wind in my hair Going nowhere I swear Told my boss that I'm done Had no luck with my mom Say what will you do with your life You know it's hard to survive A cigar in my mouth Maybe guilty but proud Now I'm an outlaw on the run Dangerous but it's so fun Running, running Welcome back, everybody, to tonight's stream of the Risen Championship Series Tier 2 Tournament. We've got Mirage versus a new Game 2 coming to you. My name is Gordo. I'm joined once again by Doctor. And Doctor, we had a huge upset in Game 1, and we're getting right into draft for Game 2. Yeah, I mean, Game 1, you had to expect a new to come in. They have the pedigree. They have the players there that, you know, it makes sense that they would come out quite strong and look really good and look the part, but... Except for those first 10 minutes, it really didn't look it. They got the early leads, and then Mirage just stayed to, stayed true to their game plan. They carried out exactly what they needed to do, and they were, like, rewarded for it. They got the victory. They're up 1-0 in the series. Now it is a best of three, so they still need to win one more. And as we take a look into this game two draft phase, it's very similar. We are just going to see the Gragas ban from Anu. He swapped out for the Thresh. And so far, the pick ban, or the picks, excuse me, identical. Mirage first pick Aphelios, Anu first pick Pantheon. But we could not say enough great things about Roy's Thresh in the first game. So definitely an adjustment that makes sense from the side of a new esports. And with that, they feel like they don't have to change too much else. They're still going to lock in that first pick Pantheon. They're going to let the Aphelios go through. But this time, they're going to answer with a Jin. Yeah, it's still that early game threat. Um, but something interesting enough about the Jin is that a Jin is probably the best solo queue AD carry in my opinion there's just so much damage you can run the dark harvest and you can run the gale force to really be a menace uh, but you also most notably have that incredibly long range crowd control where there is the hard lock of the deadly flourish or the slow uh from the curtain call both of those can really come in into effect quite nicely in these team fights mirage going to the carry top laner once again it's the camille that had been banned away in the first game now available now open and open for counterfeit yeah and dragoon just going to throw down that gauntlet here blind pick a really heavy carry champion like camille one of those split push carries 
And, you know, he's not intimidated by how the matchup against that Orn went last game. He feels like he can take the Camille this game. He can go and challenge Viper pound for pound on these carry picks. And he doesn't care if Viper picks a Jax. He doesn't care if Viper is going to try to counter pick him here. He knows that this Camille is powerful and he has confidence in himself to take that champ. Yeah, I mean, we've been seeing Camille a lot oh! with solo queue and professionally. The gauntlet has been picked up. It, a new esports, they're not letting Mirage go lightly. That's a Riven lock. It's going to be the jungle pantheon once again. And Viper is, it, Viper's hungry. Oh, yeah. I didn't dare say it on cast for fear that it could show up. But Viper can pick the Riven into Camille, and he has done so. For anyone not familiar with Viper, Viper came up originally as a Riven one trick in NA solo queue, diversified his champion pool once he went pro, but has always had that pocket Riven to go back on. And he has pulled out that Riven in specific matchups to dominate entire games, even at the LCS level. So he is able to get onto it here, down in this game against Dragoon, that's some intimidating stuff. Yeah, and you had to know it was a possibility, right? Like you didn't ban away, but if anybody at this level who has ever seen LCS knows that it's the option, and as we're heading into the secondary ban phase, we're seeing Akali being banned away, Mirage noticing that that may have started to cause issues at some point in the previous game, so they're not gonna risk it this time. They ban it away. Skarner again banned away the both teams taking notes from the previous game and adjusting accordingly so now we're going to see a new jungler from Mirage and a new mid laner from Mirage yeah, no, DNA did not have a great time in lane against that Akali. Yeah, they were able to win the game eventually but he did get solo killed by 5 fire and he does not want to risk that again yeah. and oh, man, go back to the Braum I actually really like the Braum um, into the Leona matchup. Braum is kind of that anti-melee tank support. Um, you can be so problematic with the slow, with the concussive blows. Uh, yes, there's not a lot, whole lot so far for the Unbreakable to block, but I think just overall, with the amount of melee champions you have already in the kit, it would have worked out wonderfully. They are going to go back to that Alistar, though. So it is going to be the Jin alistar combo. Very terrifying, and we've seen the Alistar work out very well previous game. If they can do it again, it'll be really great. And I have to imagine that value can't be left alone as much as they were in the first game because Meech is going to tear it up time and time again. Yeah, and Alistair also going to be a great pick into this Leona, though. He can pulverize Leona right out of her Zenith Blade, and that is what he's going to be hoping to do in this matchup. But we are going to see maybe some counter-jungling action over from the side of Rajas. They're going to lock in Nunu and Willem for the side of Hunter. He's got all sorts of crazy jungle picks today. And it, it was previously played in their match history, so they, they have some experience for it. Oh, oh man, what are we going to get? Uh, Victor being locked in, super, super good pick. It's seen some kind of waning experience so far. You know, the season first came out, he was adjusted nicely. People were playing him quite a lot. He was incredibly strong, able to really take over games on an individual level. Um, as a blind pick, it's a little concerning because he is so immobile, which is something we kind of knocked Mirage for in game one, even though it ended up not mattering. Um, but when you look at the rest of the composition, it does bring a lot to the table. Once you start getting that crowd controlled locked in, whether from the Hextech Ultimatum or the Solar Flares you play combo, you can lay down that gravity well from Victor and continue that CC chain and give Meech all the time in the world, even if you use it defensively, right? Like even if, you know, Meech is trying to set up in a turret style, set that gravity well right down on top of your ready carry and anybody that's trying to, you know, blow him up is then going to be stunned. Yeah, absolutely. And Anu is going to close out this draft to solidify themselves with a pick comp by picking up this Zoe. They now have so many tools to be able to CC people from far away with the Deadly Flourish from Jin as well as the Sleepy Trouble Bubble from Zoe. And they're going to just be trying to land those skill shots onto some of those immobile carries on the side of Mirage in the Victor and the Aphelios. And they're going to try to pick those champions up without even getting too close to where the Camille, the Nunu, and the Leona can start messing with them. Yeah, and it's, I do like Anu's composition 
a lot better than their first one. Their first one was so front heavy. Um, you know, they had the mid lane Akali they could have carried if given enough resources, but into the Lulu just didn't have the gas to keep going forward. This time it's a much more manageable matchup in the mid lane. So even if you get the same amount of attention from your Pantheon jungle in the mid lane, Zoe is going to have such a better time both individually when it comes to wave management and being able to roam, but also as the team fights start breaking out, that sleepy trouble bubble so much more impactful than anything the Akali had last game. Yeah, and Zoe, a champion that I haven't gotten to cast yet this season, but has been getting picked all over the place in professional play. She has been favored so much by these new changes and has really rocketed up to being one of those tier one mid laners. And there's a few reasons for that. She likes the new itemization. She likes some of the opponents that she's going to find herself facing pretty often. But I think an undersold factor of that is how much better her W has gotten with the new season. A lot of those active items now have become more powerful and more condensed. She can get items like Redemption more often because there's less in the pool in total. And some of the new items as well have gotten stronger and are just great resources for her if she's able to pick them up. Yeah, and there's just a lot of reasons to pick Zoe right now. And when you don't have to blind it, when you can pick it as a counter pick, you feel that much more confident in it in and of itself. Um, so I do like a news draft a lot better. I think they have more overall tools that they can kind of condense into these team fights a lot better. Whereas we saw last time when it came down to it, if they didn't have the Orn Horn or if they didn't have access to get that Akali into the back line, they they struggled. And now this time, Yes, it seems a little bit more linear because they have the Zoe and they have the Ribbon, but overall, any single tool going wrong, I don't feel invalidates the rest of their composition. You know, any person on this team can really carry at any point in the game, and I think that's something that was missing from the game one draft. Yeah, and you know, with you saying that all eyes are on Viper here, he was able to slam lane in that first game, but he was on Orn, so he couldn't be the carry that his team would have liked him to be in that top lane once he had that advantage. But now that he's on Riven, now that he's on not only a strong carry pick, but his most comfortable strong carry pick that he has years and years of experience on, if he can get a lead for himself yet again, he is just going to be looking to slam the members of Barrage and to show them why he is one of the most talented ribbons in North America and why he's been able to make that pick work at every level of competition. Yeah, and it's going to be this fighter matchup too in the top side, right? It's not Riven into a tank. It's Riven into Camille, who, if they fall behind, is very very useless right like you then result to being the hextech ultimatum bot which does not have that same impact if you were resulted to an ult bot on a tank right like if you're maokai or orn and you just get dumpstered in lane you know what at least you can still press r and be useful to the team yes camille can pop in that hextech ultimatum to potentially catch out Jin or zoe or something like that but because they're so squishy you only have like a second or two of lockdown that the rest of the team has to then pile in on and it can be such a small window that is very easy to miss so viper can put the game on the back on their back here and really run away with it i do expect anda to pay just as much attention to the top lane if not more now that viper has that in their hands yeah, that's right, Doctor, and we have seen David throw the first stone in this David versus Goliath matchup, but now let's see if a new esports are going to be able to turn it around and are going to be able to take this to a game three, keep it going for longer into tonight. I know we'd all love to see it, but in order to find out, we're going to have to get loaded into the game and we're going to have to take a quick break. So everybody stay tuned. We're going to take a break for just a couple of minutes, get loaded into the game, but don't go anywhere because we're going to bring you every bit of game two as soon as we're right back.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Risen Championship Series Tier 2 Tournament. We are getting right into Game 2 of Mirage versus Anu Esports. Mirage able to take down Game 1, and now we're going to see if Anu are able to strike back here for Game 2. I'm Gordo, once again, joined by Doctor, and Doctor, once again, we might not have any Level 1 action. And that's fine. It is do or die time for a new right. Like if they lose here, then they fall in the series and it does take it does give them their first loss so far, giving Mirage that boost either, you know, ego wise or just mental wise. And they can take that home. They can brag about it to their moms. Maybe they can take a screenshot of the victory screen and have it posted up on the fridge for them. Just everything at that point looks good. A new though, they've come back in with a new draft. They come in with a new game plan and they're looking to execute it just as nicely as they did in game one yeah and you know this is a huge deal for the side of mirage if they're able to take this down if a new loses if either of these teams lose they are not out of the tournament but they can still make it over to those elimination rounds but a win here for the side of mirage means they are just one series win away from locking down playoffs and from being able to compete for some of those really high level tier one tournament points yeah, and that's exactly the end goal for all the teams here in the championship series. They want those points. They want to continue moving forward as a team. And, you know, nobody wants to fall down early. And already, just lots of trading. Yeah, Viper just going aggressively here onto Dragoon. Looked like he was losing that trade at first, and maybe at the end of the day was, but getting a huge trade back using those broken wings to be able to weave in autos and to be able to deal tons of damage here to this Camille. But it looks like he's falling pretty low here. He's got to watch out for Dragoon's Q, but just trading back no fear in Viper's eyes. Yeah, the level two there could lead to a kill on either side, depending on who gets it first. They are trying to hit level two in the bottom lane as well. Roy playing aggressively, zoning them off, and will be able to secure it for themselves. Level two hit it pretty much the same time in the top side. So you can already see Dragoon trying to play safe. Doesn't want to give up an early kill, especially not first blood. Yeah, and I am really excited to watch how Meech and Roy play out this bot lane. They were able to get some 2v2 kills in game one, and now let's see if they're able to do it again as they were just performing almost, I hate to say unexpectedly well, as Meech is considered very good and is very highly rated by analysts in this scene. But against value and big, these guys should be one of the better bot lanes in this tournament. We're already seeing a gank, though. Yeah, it's going to oh, be a no. flash for a Viper, and here comes biggest snowball ever, the gross green one brought on by Zombie Nunu. Uh, but just with a flash, Viper going to be able to get behind the minion wave, going to make sure that they're the ones who tank that ball rather than him, and they're just going to be taking a little bit of a recall here. Anda, though, going to find Hunter in the river, just chasing right onto him, getting some damage off. But now Anda's going to find himself CC'd, and Viper has just teleported back in, but here comes Five Fire. He's going to land a oh, Sleepy no. Trouble bubble. Contra Dragoon, and now they're just going to try to burst him out. Hunter walking up because he wants to tank some of that Paddle Star damage too, and it looks like they might be able to escape a Five Fire going to flash over the wall. He picks up a flash, he picks up another flash, and not going to be able to chase down anybody though. A good effort from Five Fire, good hustle to just keep on top of everybody else, but not actually going to pick up a kill. It's three minutes into the game, and we have five flashes burned. And that's not even including the ones Five Fire was able to pick up off the ground. Like, they're already at each other's neck. And Dragoon forced to blow the teleport to match Vipers. And, you know, saving Private Viper in the top side, that minion dove in front of the snowball, trying to make sure that they were safe. Yeah, now Viper just going to be taking some of that advantage and trying to make the difference. But Fi Five Fire once again finding a flash, getting right on top of DNA, landing the Sleepy Treble Bubble, and using more sparkles to get some more damage out. Now going to be backing away again as once again Viper and Dragoon are trading here, but this time a Viper's got some more backup as Anda is wandering up here. Dragoon does not have access to the flash, so you gotta believe he's pretty much left for dead here as Viper just going to be moving on here, and Viper's gonna pick up first blood on his signature Riven pick. And that's exactly what you love to see from your jungler. If you're going to gank top tanks that much, you have to gank for the top carry. And they're going to make sure they give the first blood over to the correct player as well. Bonus 400 gold into Viper's pocket. And thing, something to note that I literally just noticed. Look at the CS difference between the two top laners. It is 30 minions to 9. That is huge. That's a kill in itself. 
Oh yeah, when it looks like Viper and Dragoon are having these really close trades where both of their health bars get equally low at the exact same time, Viper is picking up all the minions with the AoE from his Broken Wings, but Dragoon is using all his abilities on Viper, not touching the minions at all, and now finding himself at a pretty significant deficit. Yeah, that's going to be a huge hole to crawl out of because, as we all know, we've all played into that Riven matchup before where it's just they get the first blood, whether it's on you, your jungler, your mid laner, your support, whoever it is, and you just, the lane's doomed. Like, you can no longer aggress forward. You can already see the item difference so far. Pickaxe, double longsword to just, to, to just, to, uh, the cloth armor. <sighs> Yeah, no, Viper's picking up that pickaxe, and he's going to be mining for gold in that top lane. Just going to try to solo kill Dragoon or get Anda up there for a gank over and over again to try to snowball this game out of control. We can see Hunter's up in the top lane to try to make sure that that can't happen. Let's see if Viper gets baited here. Not a lot of room to work with here since it is so close to the tower. Oh, but it is going to be a potential dive attempt. They are landing the snowballs onto him, but don't have the follow-up. They don't feel comfortable tanking the turret versus Viper's Ribbon. And so he's going to be able to once again just walk on out of this. Some more wasted time for the side of Hunter. Yeah, and once again, we see DNA not having the best of times in the mid lane. By Fire really popping off with this Zoe so far. Has landed just about every trouble bubble so far. And then able to follow up with the paddle start too like the way they're playing geometry in the mid lane here is just it's perfect there's no other word for it and dna is continuing to struggle in this 1v1 yeah the knowledge of angles with zoe is something that five fire is very good at and something that dna and the rest of mirage are gonna have to be very cognizant of Zoe can land these really long range E's through using the geography of the map favorably for herself. She can land the really long Q's through using her ultimate and also can just suddenly move on top of you, deal tons of damage and go in completely unexpected directions with the use of her spell thief passive. Yeah, and since we don't exactly know what the third dragon is going to be yet, we do know what the first two are. Ocean into Infernal, which means that it's either going to be Cloud or Earth for the actual soul. One gives you bonus move speed around uh, the buffs. The other adds even more walls to the map, more zones to extend that Sleepy Trouble Bubble distance and really start causing problems for the side of Mirage, who then have to somehow migrate around, ward around, and avoid nap time yeah definitely not going to be a game where you want to be caught sleeping but five fire going to try to make sure that that is what happens hunter has got to watch out here he's been caught out by the scryer's bloom but five fire just going to be taking a recall here willing to let some peace occur for a short bit here before he comes back out on the map with the lost chapter and tries to make some violence happen that didn't look good Pan over. Yep, that is unfortunate. Blue buff going on over to Hunter instead of DNA. That is going to cause a lot of problems here in this wave management system they have gone so far. By Fire already out pushing DNA up to this point and is now has the impunity to continue to really force the issue. And you can see here they are going to be rotating up to pick up their Rift Herald first of the game so far. They'll get it before the 10 minute mark, which means they are guaranteed plates with it. Yeah, certainly are, and that's going to feel bad for the side of DNA. He really needed that blue buff to keep spamming out Death Ray onto the wave and stop Five Fire from pushing him in. Since he's not going to be able to do that now, Five Fire is just going to be shoving this wave and going to be roaming into side lanes constantly, as we can see that there's already been a bit of a lane swap coming through up here. And now it's going to be a big engage coming in from the side of Roy, but not quite going to be able to follow anything up. The Unbreakable Will comes through from Alistair to cleanse away from that CC, and he's just going to walk on away. Yeah, it's not quite level six yet for Roy, doesn't have the solar flare, does, just as I'm saying it, right? Like, of course, I'm trying to make a point, gets level six, gets the solar flare. Okay, it does look good for the next couple of dragon fights. There's one in two minutes, so they'll have access to all of their tools. They have to try and get something out of somebody, though. Uh, the slow coming in there, heal Ooh, DNA. Five fire uses the heal, has the more sparkles to go in aggressively onto DNA here. It forces out the chaos storm, means he's not going to have access to that. But here comes a big gang coming through from Hunter. He's so fast with biggest snowball ever, and DNA is just going to melt right through five fire. He gets picked up easily with flash still up. Yeah, it gets caught by the odd hitbox there on the snowball. Viper using the minions is just a little bit of insurance here. Should be able to 
Oh, a flash forward from Dragoon trying to make this fight happen. The ultimate comes through for Viper, though. He flashes away from Biggest Snowball ever. He tries to trade back, but he's not going to be able to do so. And, uh, though, is here with the drop from Pantheon. And now he's going to try to trade back onto Nunu as well. Nunu going to channel that absolute zero to try to pick him up. But Hunter has nowhere else to go. He flashes over the wall, but Big is waiting for him. Pulverizes him to the ground, ignites him, and he's going to pick up the kill for himself. Alistair carrying this game up 1-0-0 with his first kill of the game. Viper going for the highlight play there, flashing out of the big engage there. Everything trying to come up for them does go down without the kill though. Thankfully, Pantheon with the semi-global able to get in, trade back, and then just for giggles, they managed to pick up the kill on the Hunter as well. It does go to big, but the assist money all the way to Anda. We love to see it. And you can already see items being picked up, being forced forward by these AD carries of a new and they're starting to really become scary. Still a 20 CS advantage for Dragoon. Thankfully, they haven't, up to that point, really given over too much of a solo disadvantage, thankfully. So they're staying somewhat compet competitive and just, just trying not to lose at this point, really. Yeah, no, you know, in, it didn't quite work out the way he wanted it to, but you got to give some credit to Viper there. That was almost really sick. You could tell Dragoon didn't think he was going to get turned around on like that and think that he was almost going to get taken down in that fight. Yeah, I think Dragoon was hoping that the uh, support from the Nunu was a, just, a, just a little bit quicker. You know, if it connects, a, you know, half a second, two seconds earlier, then maybe you don't get that flash play coming out from Viper. And it, it's a lot closer or a lot less close than it seemed. Um, but... Whew. Value forced to flash there as he runs into Roy in a dark alley and knows that he can't stay too close to him for the, too long. There's way too many members of Mirage there. And with that, Mirage is going to pick up this dragon. Easy peasy. They do need to find a way Ooh, out. Flash Zenith Blade comes through from Roy. He is insane in this series as he gets another kill solidified for his team onto Five Fire. Knowing the exact edges of his Leona ranges and finding a great pick onto Five Fire, who has dived with his flash up for the second time in a row. The fact that he was able to get the solo flare off before fully going to sleep there as well is incredibly crucial, right? But yes, the Zenith Blade was great. Max range, everything starts looking good. But the fact that the instant solo flare locks uh, five fire down for that much longer means that it's a guaranteed kill with DNA's gravity well plus the death laser and again flash was available for five fire they didn't have to play that close to danger and it ends up costing them and it is now 2-0 over to DNA who was struggling in the laning phase they're starting to get this lead back they have a 20 CS advantage they have a two kill advantage their build path it's a bit split because they, they had to go a couple different directions but they managed to complete their mythic first they're in good shape yeah, but you gotta watch out in the top lane because Viper has almost a 2k gold lead with the addition of that Rift Herald gold taking down first turret up in the top lane and funneling that gold into the Riven. He now has Gore Drinker and he's coming back to lane and he's gonna be ready to challenge Dragoon. Yeah, taking a look at the gold here, uh, you can see Viper's 1700 gold advantage, 800 gold advantage for the junglers. It is a 1300 advantage to DNA. And then the bottom laners minimal it's a couple hundred gold so overall the advantages are plain to see right like the cs advantages and the tower advantages it makes sense and here comes viper he's going to be looking for this but hunter is up here and the hextech ultimatum has been thrown down once again though viper going to try to turn this around under dragoon and this time he's going to do it he uses the broken wings to carry him out of range of the absolute zero so he's going to be staying alive and now he has anda with a grand starfall coming oh, through no. to ensure that he can pick up the double kill and now they're going even more aggressively out of dna maybe a bit oh, too much bitten off more than they could chew there though as dna going to be able to turn this around but now here comes five fire he wants to clean this up along with the help of big big is here as well to start moving moving in on to the side of Roy. Roy going to get stunned out of the Zenith Blade, not going to be able to fall that all the way up. And now they're going to try to pick him up. Maybe the Alistair going to get another kill with the Ignite here, but not going to be able to do so. He's got the Unbreakable Will channeling, but he has no escape route and he's going to get picked up by Meech. Very elongated fight there. Both sides getting something their way for a little bit. More gold onto Viper but it's instantly traded back and we're now seeing a 4-0-0 DNA. So for all the struggles they've had so far, they're really making up for it in this kill department and they're starting to get these items flowing and being that much more of a threat. Once again, Roy completely killing it on the Leona. You just give them a little bit of an inch and they take a mile from it and they're quick to the punch. They're able to get into these positions to really assist the team that much quicker. Viper though is starting to be a problem.
They have that gore drinker. They have the plated steel caps. They're straight up winning 1v1s slash 1v2s. And it's taking that third person, AKA DNA, to show up to the fight to really make it somewhat even. Yeah, and that's going to be really dangerous for Mirage as this game gets going, because at this point, it is very clear nobody can challenge Viper in a side lane. DNA might be strong, he might be fed, but these are team fight champions with team fight leads where he wants to dish out AoE damage and melt through the entirety of a new. He can't stand in a side lane and go toe to toe with Viper. Nobody can. And so they need to find an answer to this ribbon right away. And the truth is they may not have one. Like you can set Viper in a side lane and just forget about him from the side of a new. As long as you don't give up that 4v4 situation in mid or top, then you can let Viper win you the game. As soon as you start forcing situations outside of your control and DNA plus Hunter can really take it to the Zoe and the Jin, that starts becoming a problem. But until that actually happens, just set Viper in a side lane, right? They've already taken two towers now just by themselves whether it's the herald in the top side or just straight up ego challenging down in the bottom oh five fire might find himself getting caught out again he's got big for support though this time just gonna headbutt dna away and try to keep five fire as far away as possible five fire going to use the stolen flash to get out of that absolute zero but he gets picked up by the solar flare from the side of the leona it looks like they're gonna be able to pick him up there and now it's going to be big once again falling down they're gonna pick up five fire as well it's a two for zero but now they're engaging out of dragoon he gets to have no fun this series as once again viper is just going to chop him down he's gonna fall down to one and four on this camille pick and even though his team's winning on the other side of the map, still no answer to Viper. Yeah, that's Grayscale Simulator so far for Dragoon this series. Not always the best situation, but as long as you're letting the team win, then it's it's pivotal, right? Like, not a lot of players can play the sacrifice carry, right? Like, it's, it's like in baseball, the sacrifice fly. It's there for a reason. You're supporting the other members. Cool, of the team. a big engage from the side of Roy. You might think that was a bit too far up, but he certainly doesn't think so. And neither does his team, as they have the Rift Herald coming right on through to try to push farther into this mid lane and get a second charge off into the turret. They pick up the mid lane turret, not able to pick up any kills, but don't give up any either, and maybe get a little bit of summoner spells to Boot. Yeah, so if we take stock of the last couple minutes and compare what was gained from both teams, we see one tower in the top versus one tower in the bottom. However, you're able to pick up the mid lane tier one as well. So tower wise, we're seeing Mirage in the lead again. If we took a look at the kills, we did see both Zoe and Alistar die compared to just Dragoon. So again, Mirage coming out ahead. They are going to lose the dragon. It is going to be the second dragon that doesn't go their way, but it's not a crucial dragon. It's not soul point. It's not soul itself. So at the end of the day, you're really not that concerned about it. And you're winning more than you're losing right now, which means you can keep doing what you're doing for a little bit longer before you have to start pushing for more, right? If you can trade two towers for one, if you can trade two kills for one consistently, then you're consistently going to be getting ahead. The problem is going to become who is getting ahead. Is it always Viper that's getting the kills or is it always DNA that's getting the kills? And what happens when those two meet in a lane? And I don't think we're going to find out for the next couple of minutes, but that is the breaking point here. And you got to feel like at this point that Anu just has to tighten up their play a little bit. They have this incredibly powerful side laner, but it keeps getting undermined by the fact that people like Five Fire are just stepping out a little bit too far, getting engaged on by biggest snowball ever, and ending up picked up, feeding more and more kills over to DNA. If they can just stay farther back, if they can play within their limits, then they can just let Viper carry them to victory. But they're going to need to have the discipline to do so. Yeah, and I, I like the fact that in pregame, we were talking about how everybody on a new can carry just based off their champion picks. What I'm liking from Mirage is that anybody can carry because of their performance, right? Like Meech obviously had an amazing start to game one, whereas this time DNA had a rough start and is picking it back up is able to have now a 502 scoreline 180 cs plus a 600 gold shutdown bounty on their head and that is just for being in the right place at the right time here comes a little bit of tension now as dragoon gets a little bit of help yeah, just going to be looking to pick up this bot lane turret. Viper did just take a recall to go pick up his second item of the game. That is going to be two completed items to zero for the side of Viper, by the way. His Dragoon still just forced to sit on components as he has been camped and killed over and over and over again. Yeah, I mean, 40 CS difference. We talked about how a 20 CS was one kill. 
mathematically 40 would be two kills however you also have straight up four kills advantage there so viper loving life right now has the double lifesteal items is gonna be so much more of a menace in these 1v2 situations now and i have to imagine that mirage recognized that and just sacrificed dragoon to a certain point right like you cannot be opting into these 1v2s and you're forcing dragoon to play that weak side play into the constant threat of getting dived by viper and anda but what else can you do realistically it's so hard unless you send three to four members for the riven to really make an impact in stopping them and weak side in this game is an understatement. Dragoon's side has just been amputated at this point. They can't get anybody over there without being solo killed by Viper. And now it's going to be a big engage uh, for the four-man of a new esports. They get a big pick on the Meech with the assistance of Big. And now it looks like they're going to trade one for one, but they got to feel pretty good about it so far. And now Viper coming in for the flank. Dragoon doing the exact same thing, but Viper has the ultimate. He pops it and he goes in. He's doing so much damage towards the enemy team, but it's a big double kill picked up for the side of DNA. Are they going to be able to trade back? Value though still alive still powerful five fire flashing forward picking up another kill flashing forward again picking up another kill for the side of viper a huge fight win for the side of a new esports engaged by big but finished by viper oh it might not be over yet Oh, it's going to force out the Zonias, but that's not going to save you, DNA, as there's a big fed Riven who's about to jump right on top of you as you come back to the game. That's going to be an ace for the side of a new esports, and they're going to look to move on to the Baron. Yeah, Viper's just not concerned, right? Like, has the two lifesteal items, is calling the Baron, making these plays, and the rest of the team just has to follow up at this point. You have the advantage. The Riven is winning the game by forcing awkward situations out of Mirage, and they're really not in a position to contest here. Like, yes, Hunter's alive, but Riven just kills him, right? Like, just runs up, murks him. Maybe he gets hit by a trouble bubble on top of everything, which does narrowly dodge it. Cool. But they are not done yet here as they're going to be engaging on to big, but the Baron has already fallen. Viper has decided that he's just going to bail here. He's going to jump on over the wall and there's going to be a big engage coming through from the side of Mirage. A flash forward from the side of Hunter, but now he finds himself face to face with Viper. But Viper's in a 1v4. He's going to get picked up by Meech. A huge shutdown goes over to the side of the Aphelios. And while the Baron is picked up for a new esports, two kills end up going over to the side of Mirage. Now, what can they do with those kills? Yeah, they have to make something happen. The waves, though, not in their positioning that they need. Yes, they're able to push on through, but they're wasting a ton of time trying to get them here. They might get a tower out of this, but they have to play into the Baron buffed minions of a new, which is, is incredibly tough. They don't have the best wave clear for it. Aphelios has to be the main source there. And you already sent DNA down to the bottom lane to catch the wave that was going to be there. And top lane, still not in the best position for you. And as we look at Anu, they have Baron on three members. They're not the Riven, which is the most crucial, but Riven doesn't need it to win that side lane. It's just Ooh, doing teleport it Teleport coming in from a Viper, potentially. He's teleported into the enemy team Red Jungle. I'm not sure if Mirage knows exactly where he are, so they have to be careful here as DNA going to get chunked out by Five Fire here. They still are not 100% sure where Riven is. I can see some missing pings going down into the Red Jungle. And so Mirage just going to be forced to back away here and seed this dragon because they are so scared of Viper. Yeah, they, they just don't have the battle stats right now. It is going to be Soul Point now over to Anu. It is the Cloud Soul, so they're they're feeling pretty good, right? It's bonus 20% cooldown reduction onto their ultimates. When you have ultimates like the Broken Sword, like the Grand Starfall, like the Curtain Call, and the Unbreakable Bow, like these are all big team fight ultimates that can be game changing so bonus 20 percent. if they're able to secure the next one's bonus 30 percent plus the actual active of the soul they're in good spot right now this is possibly even better than the spot that mirage was in in game one yeah absolutely and you know both of these games have just been fight after fight after fight with more than a kill a minute going into both of them and i gotta tell you doctor i love seeing this both of these teams just challenging each other mechanically and fighting back to back to back yeah, it's just nonstop action. Nobody willing to relent and give over the advantage. They're trying to just fight them at every possible moment, even recognizing when they can actually do that. You know, sacrificing a dragon because you can't fight it is big brain. 
Oh, and here comes the Hextech ultimatum laid down onto Viper. Dragoon has decided that it's time to fight here. You can't do it with two people, but you can definitely do it with four as Meech comes down and is able to pick up Viper. But meanwhile, the rest of Anu have noted that there's four members in one spot on the map, and that means they can go wherever they want with their Baron buff and start picking up some turrets. They get the mid-inner turret and are now going to start backing away. Yeah, they, they recognize the game plan. They, they know that the ribbon is crucial to the winning condition, whether it gets left alone in these side lanes and you just push on through to the base, or you send four members down to deal with it and still almost lose your top laner. Dragoon made it out with 5% of their HP. If Riven has a collector, then Dragoon dies there. So what do you do in that situation? It's a 4v1 and you're still almost losing a person. And then you lose a tower on top of it. So much time being split up here. And Mirage is being forced into these really uncomfortable positions where it seems from a gameplay standpoint, a no win. We have the advantage of being able to see the top down, right? We see all the vision plays. We see all the positions of the players. But in game, Mirage only see what they've warded for. And if you don't know where everybody is, if you don't know where the Riven is hiding in a bush, you have to play around these small things. And you don't get the option of playing the full map. You have to play within your means. And for Mirage, they don't have a lot. They certainly don't. And you can see here that Viper is adapting in real time. He just, as he respawned, picked up the stopwatch. So that's going to be able to buy him a couple more crucial seconds for his team to be able to take objectives elsewhere on the map when he finds himself getting four manned like that. Yeah, and it's, it's problematic. Even in a straight up 1v1, shouldn't need to use it should be able to just outright kill dragoon who is continuing to fall further and further behind now edcs difference there and it's it's what do you do camille is just not equipped for this fight no she certainly is not you know this is a split push champion it's not like you can go and start playing team fight camille doesn't have a choice but to sit in the side lane with that ribbon but we can see anda might be getting engaged on here yet another pickup from roy our star support over on the side of mirage has found the jungler of a new esports and his team's going to be able to pick him up another kill gets funneled over to meech he's five one and two he's starting to get a score line that looks pretty reminiscent of game one and he's going to try to carry this game on his team fighting Aphelios. Yeah, he's able to pick up a couple items now. He's up to three. He's got the Kraken Slayer. He's got the Infinity Edge and the Runans. He's set up to carry. He just needs to be put in a position to do so. And with Zoe in the top side, there's nobody here to wave play. They're just going to be able to get this inhibitor for free. They certainly are. Viper is now in a race against time as he's pushing up in the bottom lane, and he wants to try to make something happen here, but it looks like he's not going to have the time to do so. Four members of Mirage are just able to melt through the turret and the inhibitor ever so quickly. It looks like it might be a pickup onto the Leona, though. Value just going to execute Roy there. He took a bit too much damage over time, and now it looks like a sleep is going to be landed on a Hunter, and a huge amount of damage comes through. Five Fire ends up picking up that kill, and it looks like that might be the opportunity that they were waiting for. We can see that there's a possible flank coming through here from Viper. He flashes forward and is met with a flash of his own, but that means DNA is now caught. DNA pops the Zonias, but he's going to get easily picked up by Five Fire, and now the Hextech Ultimatum has come down onto Viper, but that Zonias is going to keep him alive. A big stun out of two targets, and that's going to be the clean ace to the side of a new esports. This is the moment they were waiting for. This is the flank that Viper was waiting for, and this is going to be the end of the game, taking us to a game three in this series. Viper diff is just what that game boils down to. 645, 225 CS. They're able to pick up the inhibitor here. They might not actually be able to end these. I, I, I mean, oh, they're, yeah, it's over. But Hunter's <laughs> respawning here, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it on his own. There's so much AD on the side of a new esports. They got the Jin, they got the Pantheon, they got the Riven, and that means they got the turrets, and soon they're going to have the base. His value just melting through these minions as an afterthought. Everybody just slamming away at this turret, except for Big, who is just spamming that cowbell. And that is going to be the end of game two. We are going to go all the way to a game three tonight, Doctor. So I hope nobody was planning on going to bed early this Saturday. Listen, it's only 10 p.m. on the East Coast. We're feeling good. We have our energy drinks. The, we're, we're in a good position. I'm excited. And realistically, how can you sleep when you get Riven Viper on the Rift? How can you even consider going to sleep at a time like this? And as we head into game three, it is that much more crucial that the draft phase goes Mirage's way. They cannot give over a tool like that. But honestly, after a game like that, Viper could 
Viper can do whatever they want, right? They don't need to be concerned. They know they have the top gap. They can force that issue continuously. Even if Riven and Pantheon get banned away, you can still pick a carry top with a hard crowd control jungler. It's just a crucial equation to this a new squad. And if they get either piece of it, I think they can make it work. Yeah, and Anu really showing their veterancy there with a great adaptation in game two. We talked about how Mirage's focus for this entire tournament has been drafting comps that want to get engaged into and taking those fights as the other team is forced to funnel into them. So Anu realizes this, realizes that that's how they lost game one and adapts by taking a strong split push carry for their top laner Viper and playing entirely around that split push. You don't have to worry about fighting fighting into the side of Mirage when you don't have to fight into them at all because your player is just slamming the top lane and can solo in 1v2 the other team if anybody comes up to try to stop him. Yeah, and I mean, even looking at the rest of the map, like if you break it down to a 1v1 split push plus a 4v4 in the other half of the map, if you look statistically... Mirage wins, right? They have the 7-2-3 on the victor. They have the 5-2-2 on the Aphelios, which if you subtract one death because they died literally a game. And up until that point, they were lights out. They were playing so great in that 4v4 situation that they were winning advantages time and time again, but it just came down to the top difference the riven was so much more powerful than the camille that even sending four members down they still almost lost the top laner dragoon and with that you get a kill you lose an objective and it's just split push right we've all been in that no win situation before and it has to be taken care of in draft phase you cannot play around it in game right now you certainly cannot, and that means it might be back to the drawing board over for the side of Mirage. They busted out the exact same bands in both of the first two games, focusing on towards Onda, in fact, pushing him onto this Pantheon. But if you're going to spend a ban on this Riven, or maybe even a ban on this Pantheon, that means you're letting through one of Anda's other incredibly powerful jungle picks through. It means you're going to have to choose the Talia, the Nidalee, the Lilia. One of these strong AP jungle picks might find its way into Onda's hands next game. And that, that's the decision Mirage has in front of them right now. Who do you want to give the power picks to? Who do you want to give the option to carry on the side of a new? And what can you do to shut him down? Yeah, definitely going to be exciting to watch and exciting to look for. We've seen almost a kill a minute in both of these games, and I'm hoping for the same thing in game three, except maybe even more so. We're going to have to get set up for that game. We're going to get into the next lobby, but for that, we're going to have to take a quick break. But stay tuned. We're going to be bringing you every bit of game three action in just a few minutes.
Take a moment right here Feeling like it's out gear Driving towards the sun With a rose and a gun Feel the wind in my hair Going nowhere I swear Like an outlaw on the run Dangerous but it's so fun Running, running Told my boss that I'm done Had no luck with my mom Say what will you do with your life You know it's hard to survive A cigar in my mouth Maybe guilty but proud Now I'm an outlaw on the run Dangerous but it's so fun Running, running
Welcome back, everybody, to the Risen Championship Series Tier 2 stream. We are coming into Game 3 of a new Esports versus Mirage. We have had a banger first couple of games for you tonight. And right now, we are going to be getting on into another one. My name is Gordo, and this is far too much action for me to bring you guys on my own. And so I am joined tonight by Doctor. Yes, I am here, still here, after two lightning quick games. I actually don't know if they're lightning quick. I think they were about 30 minutes, but regardless, ban ribbon, right? Like, come on, how do you come into this game through your draft and that isn't on your mind? Uh, I have to say, it's not on their mind. They banned the same they've been banning all game long, Talia, Nidalee, and Lilia being removed here. Those junglers apparently much scarier than the trauma they just received. Yeah, and you know, it's potential that Mirage has a counter pick ready if they decide that they want it. Uh, Riven, maybe not the best blind pick in the world, but certainly, you know, some some uh, some big confidence coming through from the side of Mirage to leave that champion still up. You ought to believe they at least aren't going to be blinding a top laner this time. Yeah, they, they might have to at a certain point. They do have full counter pick, so they might save that for, um, you know, poor Dragoon. But I, I don't know if that's even the right call. I think just pick them something safe, something malleable that you can kind of plug and play like a tank top and just kind of play the same weak side you've been playing already, except be useful on top of it. Um, and so we're already seeing a change coming in from a new. They've been first picking the Pantheon up to this point. This time, though, it is going to be that Olaf, which they had previously banned on blue side, this time opting into keeping the Skarner on the ban block. Yeah, certainly want to be preventing that champion from coming through again. Mirage had a great game on that Skarner on the side of Hunter in game one. But now it's going to be a new look coming through for Anda. Olaf has been a huge power pick so far for season 11 and got to be worried on the side of Mirage about what Anda's going to be able to do as he just runs through your team and is throwing those axes. And that's going to be a Maokai lock in as well and a Darius lock in for Mirage. This is the real gauntlet being thrown <laughs> down in the top lane as Dragoon is now going to lock in his signature champion and now has a great opportunity to potentially ban away vipers the best part about it is they instantly ban bane right like it's the number one counter to darius top in a lot of situations and they're just they just don't even pretend to entertain the thought they just instantly ban the vein away and this is the opportunity to follow it up with the riven ban and if it honestly if it's not banned I have to imagine it gets picked just because of what we've seen so far, but I think there is a world where it doesn't work matchup wise, and so they opt into something else. Um, but Mirage, not willing to risk it, they are going to ban that away. And there, again, there is an opportunity that this is already a Maokai top. I don't think that's the case. I think it's the Maokai support. It's incredibly strong right now. So it does give that top lane counter pick once again to Anu. And Dragoon. Three for three now, throws down the gauntlet yet again, but this time bans away Viper's Ribbon. He says, okay, okay, you know what? In the first game, I played against your Orn. The Orn was just a little bit too overpowered in the early game. You got some ganks and you set me behind. In game two, you got your very best champion and you were able to slam me in the matchup. Okay, but this time, I'm going to lock in my signature champ. I'm going to ban away yours. I'm going to ban away the best counter. And now you have to show me what you have, Viper. Yeah, and it's an interesting thought. Going to leave it at that. What I am going to continue forward, though, is that Anu are actually banning so many supports away from Roy, who has made an impact on pretty much anything they've been given so far. The Thresh, absolutely insane. The Leona, less production, but still very positive production. This time, though, both banned away. They're going to fall back to that Morgana to protect the Aphelios. So it is still a hard crowd control champion yet also having a bit of support there with the Black Shield. And there are just the final couple picks coming in from the new. And uh, it's up to the top lane now. What are they going to counter pick with? NAJ is being threatened yet again. And now Kennen, another good option into the Darius. You got to believe it's going to be something a little bit more ranged. Aatrox, almost ranged, given how far away that Darkened Blade can reach. Rekton now being hovered is a pretty powerful duelist. Might just go head to head with the Darius here. Two champions who spin their weapons around in circles back on the Aatrox. There's a lot of possibilities here, and it is going to be the Aatrox locked in. Another fighter versus fighter matchup in the top lane. Yeah, it, 
this one's a bit beefier, right? Like no one is just gonna absolutely 100% to zero their opponent in the top side. They're both gonna be very drain tanky. It's gonna come down to a lot to how long can the Darius stay up? Can they get that five stack passive going? Can they then get the axe chop down to secure the kill? Or will they be, you know, outrun potentially? That's a Seraphine lock in in the mid lane, I, I believe. I yeah, I believe that is going to be mid lane Seraphine. It's something we've seen already this tournament, and it is going to mean that they have a lot of buff ability between the Nunu, between the Morgana giving CC immunity, and between the Seraphine giving shielding and healing, along with the attack speed from that jungler. The Darius and the Aphelios are both going to love all those supportive picks to buff them up. Meanwhile, we're going to see the Aatrox locked in for the side of Anu, and you know, Aatrox kind of like a Riven Light at the end of the day when you think of it. They got the three-step Q, they got the cc on the w they got the dash on the e they got the ult to make all the other moves better and a viper doing his best here to make the riven impression come through and he's going to try to take that into the darius on the side of dragoon definitely one interpretation of aatrox but you are right it is going to be a very interesting top lane matchup um if dragoon cannot win here then it just simply wasn't meant to be you know they have their champion they have a decent top lane matchup going for them they have a lot of support coming through between the morgana the seraphine and the nunu so they, they are set to shine uh meech once again also in a good position to carry uh again it's very similar to their game one draft where instead of lulu they have the seraphine uh it comes down to the potential jungle matchup though because i wasn't that impressed with the nunu it didn't really bring enough to the table for me to really get hype about it you know there's not it has hard crowd control but it's it's so flimsy right when you compare it to what we've seen them on from the skarner it's just it leaves a lot wanting uh, I'm going to take this time to simp for my lord and savior, Sejuani. Pick the champion. It is incredibly good. On-demand crowd control. Nobody has yet to give me a reason why it's bad. And we've already seen why Nunu is not exactly the pick here. Yeah, no, was able to find some good engages on the five fire, some good early ganks last game on the side of Hunter on that Nunu, and he is going to be looking to do that same thing this game. Also want to look over towards Mirage, is with the Morgana and the Seraphine locked in, Mirage now have access to two different forms of long-range CC. They can chain those together in order to keep somebody locked down for a very long time and to hold them still for a biggest snowball ever from Nunu or for an engage from Darius. And with everybody locked in, we're ready to go. Uh, man, this is this is a tough one to call. I actually don't know who wins draft phase just flat out because, you know, in game one, we were pretty solidly towards the side of Anu just because they had that early game draft. They had a lot of precedent coming in that they were an incredibly strong team. And so we were like, yeah, Anu, they, they had this early game draft. They're able to get going. They executed it perfectly. They got the early kills. They looked to be in a good position to really run away with it. And all of a sudden, Beach picks up a couple kills, gets a little bit of support from the support of mid laner plus their, their, their own actual support, which, again, Roy's Thresh, it's been banned twice now since then. So I don't know who to call it in the draft phase. I just, it's so close and we know how both teams can operate the drafts in front of them. It could be really be anybody's game. Yeah, no, it's definitely some brand new support looks, some brand new mid looks, some brand new top looks coming through from both of these teams coming into game three. We've already talked about how important winning this series is for both of these teams' tournament prospects, but we'll say it again for anyone who might have just tuned in. Winning this game puts you one series away from guaranteeing qualification into the playoffs for this tournament, into getting into the top eight bracket, into getting the eliminations down, and being able to score ever so ever more points now losing this doesn't knock you out of that contention but it certainly is a big step down and means that it's going to be so much harder to get there in the first place yeah i mean the difference between 3-0 and 2-1 doesn't sound like a lot but it starts adding up as the rest of the group stage continues you know you want to be able to lock in that 4-0 to guarantee your spot going forward instead of being in the middling where potentially having an off day that then removes you from the running so at, everything's on the line here these two teams they're one game away from securing either that 3-0 or dropping down to 2-1 
And it really can't be stated how impactful that can be to your mental. And if Mirage are able to come out here, then they're going to be able to carry this mental into their next series. They will have beaten a new, a pedigreed team, a solid team, and a team that has slacked them in game two. To be able to come back and regurgitate that back is going to be a great feeling for the team. They just have to do it. Yeah, and you know, in case you needed any more reasons to not want to drop down to X and 1 in this bracket, following tonight's games, the artists formerly known as Not Academy Team are going to be down in that bracket and are going to be waiting for you. That is potentially the most feared roster in this whole tournament, and you do not want to end up having to play them for your tournament life in the next couple of days. Huge stakes for both of these teams coming into this game three. They need it's do or die if they want to be able to move on into the 3 0 bracket. And it's going to come, it's only going to be one of those teams. It can't be both. And so we're going to have to find out who it's going to be. We're going to take a quick break here to get loaded on up into the game, but do not go anywhere. We're going to be right back to find out who wins this series.
Welcome back, everybody, to the third and final game of tonight's Risen Championship Series between a new esports and Mirage. These two teams are going to be competing to enter the 3-0 bracket and avoid falling into the 2-1 bracket. My name is once again Gordo, and I am once again joined by Doctor for tonight's games. And Doctor, who do you think is going to take this all at the end of the day? I'm going to say Mirage, because... I felt like it. I, I don't really have any reasons uh, behind that call out. I think that the way they've played in the 4v4 has been outstanding. They've found so many advantage to, advantages to go their way. And I know I said I don't have any reasons and I'm following it up with reasons. But they've just played that 4v4 so much better than a new has up to this point. And as long as they can control Viper like they did in game one, then they have a W waiting for them at the end of the day. They have that 3-0 on board and they're in good shape for now though they just have to do it they just need to stay alive in the next couple minutes don't give any early kills over to andas olaf and giving them that leg up that they need they just need to they need to be metered within yeah, measure but... controlled yeah, you gotta say, coming into it, don't give any kills over to Anda early. Might be quite the difficult task, as Anda's gotten some early kills in both Game 1 and Game 2. So definitely gonna be on the side of Mirage to have to keep themselves safe and keep themselves warded up and keep Anda from being able to move on into them and pick up those early kills because he is on yet another strong snowballing jungler and he's got to be very careful here. We can see Dragoon before the minions have even gone down in the first wave going aggressive and once again in the bot lane going hard on to Roy right away going to be flashing forward and going to be picking up first blood is value. Excellently played by him there in the 2v2. The 2v2 has been such a strong point for Mirage this entire series but a new esports in game three when it matters most to turn it around onto him we don't even know what happened we came in at the halfway point of that fight and they were dead they were basically dead already yeah and now once again they're going in onto meech this maokai is just so powerful he's got so much cc he's got so much damage with the saplings and meech is now flashless as is roy they're out of all their summoners they've got hunter down here for support but he can't really turn it around or can he as big is now just going in aggressively onto meech no! and he's going to end up picking him up an excellent deadly flourish threads the needle between the members of the opposing team and picks up meech two kills over to value before three minutes yes they're able to trade back on the big but you will take that any day and just like that viper has his flash blown by dragoon in the top lane dragoon making it happen on this darius and he's gonna have to if his bot lane's gonna get destroyed like this you thought you were here for top tier league of legends and it appears we queued into a solo queue game just holy moly so much action so quickly and the maokai support is winning the game like there's something to be said for having on demand crowd control in that twisted advance into smash combo and the fact that the deadly flourish just threaded the uprights there to take out meech was just icing onto this bot lane cake that a new are building for themselves and it gets them off to such a great start they already have completed swift boots they're already following it up with double daggers whereas Look at poor Meech. He's got a Doran's blade and some raggedy old boots he found in a dumpster. Yeah, no, the move really quick boots coming through for value. He is going to be a racing through that lane to just keep landing skills on to Meech and Roy. Meech and Roy have been such a strong point for Mirage thus far, but this game they've been put far behind and now they need to show how they can play from that position. But just like that, Dragoon is going aggressively here in the top lane. He has some backup from his jungler and they might be able to get a kill here on the Viper and they do so, but Viper flashes forward. And by Viper, I of course mean Anda. As Anda is going to try to pick up on Dragoon here, but the passive from Darius, so powerful, getting full stacks immediately because of that kill from Viper, and now going to force Onda back. No kills traded there. Flash taken off by Onda, and a kill brought over to the side of Mirage. They are playing this game so well in the top lane. Yeah, we're finally seeing something come out of Dragoon positively. They get their pick. They blew the flash earlier just by threat of the ghost, and they finally get some jungle assistance to take advantage of that advantage they get the gank in hunter comes in with the giant snowball and you even have anda coming in flashing forward aggressively trying to get the return kill but this the healing coming in from dragoon was just a bit too much 
it was literally just right there. The kill was so close, but they weren't able to really take it home. And so it sets up a really strong top side for Mirage, kind of making up for what their bottom lane has become. Yeah, you thought this series was going to be top gap, but it was but a ruse. Dragoon drops the training weights. He picks up his Darius pick, and he is slamming Viper early on in this first game. He's already picked up a kill for himself, and he's going to look to transition this lead even farther on his signature pick. Doesn't, doesn't take... Ooh, a big ultimate for DNA going aggressively here on the Five Fire. Five Fighter forced to flash away. Oh, he no is. longer has the flash though, and he's going to be face checking right into Hunter. He tries to trade back with the command shockwave, but it's not going to be enough as he gets picked up by Seraphine, gets picked up by the Nunu with help, and is now going to find himself down zero and one once again in this series. DNA has to be the absolute luckiest player in this series. Like, everything just works out for him. Poor Viper. Follow-up game in the top lane. The Infernal Chain's going to pull Dragoon back in, but that doesn't even matter when Biggest Snowball ever is CCing you for so long. That's going to be another kill picked up. It's going to go to the Nunu this time, but that's assist gold over to Dragoon. That's a CS lead over to Dragoon. He's going to shove this wave into turret. He's going to be able to get a good recall off. He isn't taking the teleport this game, by the way. He's taking the ghost. He's going all in on top lane aggression. Yeah, and I gotta give it to Twitch chat. They were actually right about what was gonna happen here. They said that uh, poor Viper was gonna be 0-2 before eight minutes. And I, I didn't believe it because we've seen Viper in some really good positions so far tonight. So I just, I just didn't have faith in the Twitch chat, uh, but they were right. Six and a half minutes, tick over on the board and Viper has now died twice, picking up those stages. Plated steel caps for their first item, contrasting to the Bramble Vest so far of Dragoon. Twitch chat, once again, is the best analyst of any of us. They know what's going to happen before it happens. At least one of them always does. And now it's going to be a huge lead for Dragoon at the top lane. The CS has gone back in Viper's favor, but with a kill and an assist, Dragoon is going to end up with the gold in his favor. Yeah, in a good position. He's down in CS, though. Um, so... Wait. Hunter is stealing away the blue buff, but now is finding himself chased away by Viper. He's got Onda in the wings to try for this. Hunter just going to be forced to flash over the wall. And now here's a flash engage from Big. He gets the snare down on to the side of Roy, but the potential turnaround coming in here from me. Oh, no! a little bit away, but it turns out that there was a sapling waiting all along. The trap was laid by Big and it ends up picking up a kill, but now Five Fire is finding himself ganked again. He's going to get the shockwave down onto two, but he's already been taken down everything is just working for everybody this game everybody gets to have a good time poor roy walking into the sapling waiting in the bush gives the kill over to big t and it, that's just unfortunate like you can't always plan to have a situation like that happen and we get the repeat ganks onto the flashless members of a new it's every laner's dream right you ping it in chat you're like hey i burned their flash they don't have it come gank me and nine times out of ten the jungle is gonna go but raptor camps up I, I just can't do it it's i don't have time in my schedule i'll pencil you in for some time tomorrow it's I, it, too busy but this time we're seeing hunter on the new new making sure that his jungle his laners excuse me are getting the support they need they're currently 3-0 in top mid and they're looking to continue this into the next couple minutes as they set up for the next dragon. And Doctor, you might have called it. You said that this would be a new early in this game. You didn't have a reason for it specifically, but it looks like you might have been right after all. Is Hunter now CC immune with that dark shield going to just walk on through, channel absolute zero in the middle of everybody and pick up big as a result. Onda going to run away, doesn't even need to use his own CC immunity, but uh, you know, the new new with the black shield, he just don't care. He walked right on through everybody and he can do whatever he pleases. And Dragoon just walked up and stole the kill because Darius. But the fact that it followed through the blast cone too is just cherry. Dragoon making sure they're in the right place at the right time to collect 300 gold. They're now 2 0 and 1. They have a bit of a bounty going for them. And just every bit of gold going to Dragoon is bad news for Viper. And I we keep harping on this top lane. And it gets a little repetitive. It's a little broken record. But when you get the results that we've seen in the previous two games, and we're seeing the exact opposite in this game three, it's something you have to talk about.
Oh, and that's gonna be another big charm landed on a five fire. He's just getting chain ganked this game. Once again, going to get the shockwave onto two. Once again, not gonna matter. He gets picked up, and that is gonna be the first kill this game without Hunter involved. But Hunter, he is not willing to give up here. He's going right into that top lane. He wants to gank Viper again. He wants to keep getting Dragoon ahead. Yeah, they have the Rift Herald too, so they are gonna pop that, I have to imagine. They might go for that first brick top, but they aren't holding onto it. They're actually gonna fall away and potentially use that to break first mid brick because they've already gotten those first two plates. It's very close to going down. Yeah, no. So, and to take that ever so needed break away from top lane, let's talk about the jungle. Let's talk about Hunter. He heard you BMing his new new pick in Champion Select. <laughs> and so now, prior to about 30 seconds ago, he had 100% KP in this game, and he is showing no signs of slowing down. He's picked up the Rift Herald. He's got, been a part of six out of the seven kills in this game, and he's coming top lane again. He is chain ganking Viper this game, keeping him on only those plated steel caps, getting Dragoon farther and farther ahead, and he's not going to stop viper's doing a good job farming though right like he's at 82 he is going to get matched right now by dragoon who was able to claim that wave but for being dead so often and for being forced away from these minions so often he's actually staying in here Ooh, a face check from roy is going to mean he's going to get easily picked up by onda here onda picks up his first kill of the game there but hunter not one to be left out going right in onto big gets a ton of damage there with the big manch plus the snowballs not quite going to be enough to pick up the kill there as dna has headed back to the mid lane and that should give the second dragon of the game over to Anu as well. Um, they, there is contestion available since both supports are no longer involved. And you can see here the dragon's going to reset. Nunu's now in play. They're going to ward the board. But this might actually end up going over to Mirage. They, they just have more members here right now. And which jungler's true damage ability is going to be better at smiting the bear or the dragons and the barons this game? Is it going to be the ability from Olaf or is it going to be the consume from Nunu? And now it's going to be Viper potentially getting a little bit caught up here. Beauty Hunter feels so good just walking forward. Channels the absolute zero, but he might get shut down here. He heals back up with the consume though. And Dragoon, meanwhile, has picked up a kill on the five fire. And now they're going to be forcing away the members of a new esports. They're going to potentially get a big engage here off of DNA's ultimate. Potentially going to pick up on to Viper, but no, he's just going to retreat back under the turret, but a, overall, a pretty great win for Mirage. Yeah, they get the dragon, they get the kill onto Five Fire, it's now a killing spree for Dracoon's Darius, and if you're going to have a game pop off, it had to be this game three. Dragoon is making sure it's happening and they're just killing it, right? Like they've got the kills. They've got the money. They're in position that they need to be. And you'll notice they were actually involved in the team fight. They don't have teleport. They've ran all the way down there and Viper had to teleport. They just didn't have the mobility to get down there in time. And so it is going to be a tower first brick at the mid lane going on over to Mirage, opening that up, giving DNA now the opportunity to move around the map a bit more freely. Yeah, and he's gonna love that opportunity because let's talk about this mid lane matchup for a second here. Five Fire really looking uncomfortable against this mid lane Seraphine. He has continuously just found himself getting straight up picked by the Encore, met and CC'd up while all the other members of Mirage are able to come into the mid lane and pick up kill after kill after kill onto his Orianna. Yeah, and it's the continuous notice and attention from the Nunu. This is why you pick Nunu. It's, it has to be in the lanes, making things happen because you clear so fast. What are you doing with all your spare time? And this is exactly it. Yeah, once again, Big going to be forced to flash his biggest snowball ever, just coming in right through from a Hunter. Going to stay alive this time, but not going to have access to that resource for next time. Now, Onda hanging out in the top lane, making sure Dragoon can't bully around his top laner anymore. Viper has done a great job of keeping up in CS this game, but Dragoon nonetheless has found himself 3-0 and zero on this Darius and is going to be looking to maybe have some huge team fights later on in this game. Yeah, Five Fire even making the roll up as well. They do get the Ghost out of Dragoon, which comes back fairly quickly. Um, it is a decent summoner. I, I miss the days when we used to see Flash Ghost mid laners, uh, like Victor, surprisingly enough. Um, but in the top side, that Darius, it's so signature to see the Flash Ghost, and it works out, right? If he didn't have Ghost there, then he potentially has the Flash or get back into lane quicker with a teleport or something like that but the ghost bringing that advantage gets them out of dodge they do get some power damage down but if you look at the rest of the map they lost the red buff due to five fire not being in a position to contest it uh they do end up losing the blue tower in the bottom lane as well and all of that for just some damage in the top lane 
you know, great macro play from Mirage here, getting the lead up in the turrets early on in the game, able to pick up a dragon for themselves as well. And they've been able to do that throughout this series. They've been really contesting these dragons. They were able to get soul in game one really early on. And now this game, they're just going to be looking to potentially fight around there. They've got serious advantages onto some of their team fighting picks. Meanwhile, the team fighting picks on the side of a new, like this Oriana with her big shockwave, has found herself incredibly far behind. Yeah, not even able to complete a mythic yet. The only one, minus, again, poor Viper, who has been, again, competitively ganked, repeatedly ganked. Um, so they're they're falling behind. But it, it's coming down to DNA on these supportive champions coming out ahead. It, it's not typical. It's not what you generally expect. Um, and this was the counter pick for Mirage. They had the opportunity to choose what they wanted to play into the Orianna, whereas the Aatrox was the counter pick to the Darius. And in both situations, Mirage is coming out ahead. Yeah, and that's going to be Mirage's style and the style they've brought throughout this whole tournament. Like, what does Mirage look to do? They love to have the enemy team come into them and fight into them in these tight enclosed corridors. So they pick things like the Seraphine that has the Encore. They pick things like Nunu that has the Absolute Zero. They pick this Aphelios for the third game in a row. And Meech has been such an incredible performer in the first two games. So they are willing to take these supportive mid laners to give even more power onto Meech and to enable him to be the carry that he's able to be so far this series. Which, yes, series-wise, lights out. Meech has been on top of the game. They've come out ahead in pretty much every scenario. But so far, after that early two kills going on over to value, we haven't really seen a whole lot in the bottom lane. Like, we've seen snowballs traded for the Maokai ultimate, but that's about it. We haven't really seen much else. Right now, we're seeing Merch, Meech having double buff somehow and they're gonna try and use that to take advantage of the dragon it is the infernal drake which means we do get the infernal soul at some point which could lead us to the most explosive game of this three game series yeah and they can just keep forcing on these because they aren't even scared of a potential steal from the cc immune onda because they have access to consume on the side of nunu and they can guarantee that smite from a huge amount of hp that onda can't even get test plus onda was in the top lane he's looking to engage andre dragoon here he passes the ultimate immediately popping that ragnarok trying to go in aggressive andre dragoon but dragoon just going to ult on top of him going to use all of his stacks going to try to pick up some kills Kills, but not going to be able to do so he's gonna find himself shut down meanwhile Roy has been picked up on the other side and it looks like it's going to be a disfavorable fight for a new esports or for uh, Mirage rather yeah I mean walking into the bush you, you can't generally expect the Olaf to be there and unfortunately for Dragoon and it just had more friends in the vicinity that were able to respond quicker. So he ends up going down. He does almost pick up the kill on the five fighter. Uh, unfortunately, didn't have the ultimate because it didn't reset off of Anda. But you saw just how much damage came out of that slice there. Just five fire had like 5% HP. It was, it was so close to trading out. And they end up picking up the kill onto Roy as well. It, it was off camera, so I missed exactly how it happened. Um, but I imagine walking that far forward led into some nice Maokai CC, which leads into values damage, who now at 302 has that Gale Force, has that collector, which means the guaranteed execute at that certain percentage. Yeah, and the scary part for Anu here is that Dragoon might already have the damage to be able to make those turnarounds happen. If that had all been face up, if he had had full vision of the map and known how hard he was getting collapsed on, Dragoon could have just fought Anda the whole time and likely won. The only reason Anda was able to stay alive is because Dragoon wasted precious time that he could have been auto-attacking, running away from Anda because he still believed that he could escape. If he had just tried to fight that straight up, he could have taken down the Olaf and then moved on to Five Fire and maybe even taken him down too. Yeah, and at that point, it's a two for one, or two for two, excuse me. And you love that as Mirage, because you're so skirmishy. It's more gold onto your, your primary carry at this point. And it, it just looks good from an optics perspective. And it's really interesting seeing the situation. Okay. <laughs> now that we've found ourselves in just the top half of the map, surprisingly, is actually going over too. Ooh, the CC immunity runs out at just the wrong time before the side of Roy, but they're able to turn around that fight immediately onto Big and take him down without a second thought. Now they're going to be pushing in the mid lane with this Rift Herald. They've got the curtain call coming through. They're picking up kills. They shoot down the side of the opposing AD carry right as he trades back with their mid laner, but that's going to be another deadly flourish. These snipes from value this series are insane as he picks up another one, but now it's a big engage coming 
through from the side of Hunter. Here comes the damage as Onda is just trying to run through the back line. He gets a shutdown out of the opposing Seraphine, but now it's going to be just Dragoon trying to carry this fight. He takes down another one. He's picked up three kills. It's going to be a three for three all in all, a like slugfest of a fight in the mid lane. And that could have been so much worse for Inu. You saw the big axe coming down from Dragoon, the Gore Drinker heal coming in pixel perfect, making sure that it wasn't a resettable execute. And then we get the, the continuous executes coming in from Value, who is so far ahead, and just guaranteeing the damage. They don't have an answer yet to that. And that fight was really scattered, because you saw the initial engage from Big. He gets traded back instantly, and it suddenly looks really bad for a new because they're under tower. They're fighting into all of this early aggressive from Mirage, and it just looks bad. But then all of a sudden, everybody starts getting super incredibly low. The curtain call comes out. They can't really aggress forward. Then we see five fire go down as well and now all of a sudden it looks really bad for a new but the continuous long range assault from value with that collector with the gale force just really claws back because it's just guaranteed damage he picked up two quick kills between the curtain call and the deadly flourish and all of a sudden it's much more manageable finally dragoon shows up and it's very even at that point for how far ahead dragoon is he does end up picking up a couple more kills but at the end of the day it's still a four for three a moment of silence for all of my Darius mains in the chat. How difficult must it be in Season 11 to time an Oxian Guillotine when half the champions you're playing against are building Gore Drinker and can suddenly just heal up hundreds of HP? It's going to be so difficult for Dragoon in this game to try to get those executes down onto Viper and down onto Onda because they are just going to keep using their Gore Drinkers to stay alive for even longer than you expect. So the answer is just, just do it on Five Fire. Ooh, that's a big pick potentially onto DNA, but the CC immunity from the Black Shield does come through. Not enough to save him from Shockwave, but enough to save him from follow-up CC and enough to guarantee that he's going to be able to escape. And now he's got all of his notes stacked up. He could potentially look to heal himself, but just going to be using it to throw out ease. And now they're moving on to the Baron. Okay. Uh, they are going to get found out. It's about half HP. Curtain Call is here so fast but here comes the maokai ultimate those cats going to be running across the team the baron is picked up though hunter has finished it off and now they're looking for the re-engage after they pick it up the aphelia assault goes wide but here comes encore landing a huge charm onto multiple targets and they're gonna melt right through them with the help of meech's damage meech picks up a double kill for himself and now dna is running towards five fire trying to pick him up in comes the snares and he picks up another kill value going to be here to pick up dna just takes him down with the fourth shot it's a three for two fight but the baron goes over to the side of mirage i don't think that's actually as good for mirage as it looks like value is so far ahead 604 is just bleeding mirage dry like there's just so much damage every little fourth shot just, just kills people and what we're seeing so far is dragoon doesn't have an answer to getting on to value yes he has the stride breaker but he has to contend with the gale force and the deadly flourish and big t and there's just there's just not enough there for dragoon to force their way through because it, it, what do they do what is dragoon's option at that point flash forward okay you might get a little bit off but where's the follow-up and it's just yes they get the baron yes they trade three for two but i think that fight was actually a really big highlight onto values value it really was, but they also get onto Soul Point as a result of that one fight. They aren't able, even with the huge threat that Value represents, they aren't able to move into the Dragon Pit and actually interrupt Mirage from attempting to do the Dragon, even without access to their new new. So that means that they are now going to be on Soul Point with this next Dragon coming up in about four minutes, and Smite fights are not an option against new new. Consume does so much true damage to objectives that Anda has no hope of ever stealing away a dragon barring a massive mistake from hunter so it's almost a done deal at this point that mirage could get onto that soul unless anu finds a way to get a favorable position in these fights and prevent them from even starting it in the first place yeah and it the engage here oh no oh and a big engage comes through that's going to be the charm landed in on the five fire he's going to go down to absolute zero here and he's already taken out now meat has been pulled in though and he gets taken down incredibly early by viper the 80 carry is down for the side of mirage and this means they might be doomed in this fight onda is in there 1v3 he's gonna get taken down by dragoon for the first reset noxy and guillotine of the fight now dragoon going to flash forward and go on to value value's taking so he's incredibly low he tries to heal but he's dead he is shut down by the side of dragoon excellently played by him there takes the noxy and guillotine 
guillotine, chops it down onto Jin's head, and executes value easily, even if he doesn't get the reset. Yeah, and everything is now in danger of going wrong for Anu. They're cracking the base open. There's only the two members left alive. I think they can hold out and oh, not in on the big Gets another kill here. He is 7-1-5 and five here on his signature Darius. He was destroyed in the top lane in game one. He was destroyed in the top lane in game two by Viper's Riven, but in game three, he finally gets his Darius and he is slamming the game. Meanwhile, Five Fire has whiffed his Shockwave, not going to be able to get the re-engage he wants, and Mirage are going to take their spoils and get out of there. Yeah, so really interesting engage there. They managed to find two members in the Raptor pit. Seraphine using that Encore to really set something up for them. And Dragoon was in the midst of that entire team fight. Just tons of AoE damage, all the healing in the world. You saw even that massive shield that Ando was able to get simply wasn't enough. And Meech going down early in a previous game meant they'd lose the team fight. This time though, they've had a bit of a rough game. They're not exactly at the same pace they were, but it doesn't matter because Dragoon exists. 7, 1, and 5. And that time, they actually get onto a flashless value and they can make something happen. If they can do that again, the game is over. They just they just have to find flashless value. Yeah, they certainly do. And, you know, Dragoon really showing off just how much value's positioning is going to be integral to all of these fights. Because this is a Ghost Flash Darius. He is going to be as mobile as possible. He's got the Stride Breaker active as well to chase even farther. And he showed in that last fight, if he gets on top of value, it's just a W, it's just a bonk with the guillotine, and he's dead. It's over right then and there. And it, it's up to the rest of Anu to really step up to the plate now. They've gotten to where they are in this game, thanks to value. But when you look across the board, it's not the same level of production from all five members. And whether it's an off day or an off game, something has to change in these next five minutes. Not even five minutes, because in a minute, they have Infernal Soul to contend with and Baron that they have to somehow secure. Yeah, it's going to be a quite the uphill battle for them here, but uh, it's they're doing the first steps. So Anu has zoned off from the dragon here because they aren't willing to risk giving up that soul. If the soul goes over to Mirage, they are going to have so much more damage. But this might be the engage that they were looking for. They get onto Onda here. Onda hasn't used his ultimate, but they're just moving right forward onto Five Fire. Here comes a flank from Viper, but Dragoon gets right on top of him, lands the big Q, goes through, can go for the Noxian guillotine. He enters stasis. Oh, the the here comes Encore, but it doesn't land on anybody. DNA has taken down Onda, and now it's just going to be kills coming through for Meech. Meech has taken down one target. Hunter is now running through to CC everybody else. Meech going to end up with a double kill, and now Value is the last man standing. An incredibly clean fight from the side of Mirage is going to solidify this game in their favor. They have won a four for zero team fight and they are just going to march on into the base looking to go up three and zero in the risen championship series that should be just about the end here waiting for the minions to come in and i have to feel bad for value they do everything in their power to win the game here and the rest of the team just wasn't on the same page they weren't able to play the protective carry composition quite as well as mirage were and mirage coming in facing off against the big team of Anu, the big team that everybody thought was going to come out ahead here, and Mirage stepping to the plate, coming out ahead, putting their foot down, and coming out 3-0 here. And the main character of that game, well, it certainly looks to be Dragoon on his signature champion, especially in that second-to-last fight, finding an impressive flash kill on to value, just melting him down instantly. I've got to give huge props over to Hunter on his new new pick, going 6-1-16, and 16, participating in all except for one kill for his team, and just constantly able to get that black shield on top of him, run through the team with biggest snowball ever, and CC up the targets that he needs to. He was too tanky to be taken down and he just provided so many slows and so many resources for his team to be able to keep up those fights and to be able to guarantee that mirage was able to win the game yeah it's just very cohesive team-wide effort a lot of people will look at that score line and be like well dragoon carried right seven one and eight their only competition was values seven one and four but overall 
team-wide effort. You've already touched on the Black Shield, the Seraphine, the Nunu, and that was a lot of the game plan across all three games. The Skarner in game one with the uh, Lulu and the Thresh and just everything they came in with was a team-wide effort. Whereas outside of this game three, a lot of the new esports, they were kind of focused on individual carries. Game two, obviously Viper's Riven kind of popped off with it, and I, I have to shout out to Dragoon for keeping their mental intact, for not looking at these two previous losses they had been handed in the top lane and letting that get to them they come in they said coach give it to me i can take it i can carry us to victory i can bring us to the championship and they've just about done it they're 3-0 off the back of dragoons darius and if, if that has to get banned it has to be on the ban list you cannot give that over yeah, it is not Dragoon's first carry performance in this tournament on his Darius. And unless teams start banning it, it certainly isn't going to be the last. Dragoon has just proven this game that he can challenge the likes of Viper when he gets this champion. He can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these players who have been experienced in the LCS. And the entirety of Mirage has proven that they can do the same thing. A new esports is a super team in the amateur league. Five Fire, one of the greatest amateur players over the last last couple of years uh Onda, viper and big all coming through with lcs experience but mirage does not care about that pedigree they come through and they take the series two to one they fight on their terms and they're able to come out with the win yeah it's just it's a cinderella story in the series and you love to see it and it does bode well for mirage to continue forward they get that 3-0 scoreline they avoid the 2-1 bracket that now anu has to contend with and you've already talked about some of the teams they're going to be finding themselves up against down there and when you look forward at the ending stage of this tournament every win literally counts it's such a point to win early and avoid those lower half brackets you don't want to be fighting for your tournament life that early on yeah no mirage having to rebuild their whole team this year around dragoon after having uh had all their other members move on they are able to prove that they can contest with the big boys that they have the potential to go far and to win this tournament they now have a better record than some of the best teams that people had the highest rated coming into this tournament they just beat another one of those teams and now the sky's the limit for where this mirage team can go and with that i'd like to thank everybody for tuning on in tonight this has been a great series to cast and i'm sure it was a great series to watch as well stay tuned for the rest of the risen championship series throughout the next couple of days but that is going to do it for tonight bye